Hello and welcome back. Quick Hands Rugby League Podcast. This is the pod that tells it like it is. Episode 63, Arthur, George. Hey, we're, we're back. back. We did it. We finished the round. We did. <laughs> Took two weeks, but <laughs> we got there, hey? Hey, hey. All games played now. Mate, you know, beauty comes with time. <laughs> That's How good it. was it? How yeah. good was it? You boys enjoy the weekend? That yeah, was good. Full weekend Very of good. rugby league. How good is it? I can, yeah. I, can, I, can, I can run a conversation with people now. Yeah. yeah. So every, to, every time the phone rings now, I don't get scared. It's someone asking... Where am I? Or for an invoice or something? I, I know half the time or three quarters of the time, it's someone talking about rugby league. So I'm I'm in heaven. <laughs> I'm Beautiful. in heaven. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was, good. it was good to have it back. It's fantastic. Definitely. Let's kick off uh, controversy corner, mm-hmm. uh, where we break down the current issues in rugby league. And boys, I've got a doozy to kick off with. This only came out just literally a few minutes ago. Um, on Instagram. So get this: Spencer Lenu is at the judiciary as we speak. But that whole racial slur charge. And the NRL's lawyer has begun by stating that Lenu played for Tonga and has <laughs> referred to him as Spencer Luai <laughs> oh multiple no. times. Oh Just no. to clarify, Lenu played for Samoa, not Tonga. Oh no. So that so, so the NRL's off to a great start. They oh. do their homework very well, don't they? Oh. With players and everything like that. It's it's really good. They've got a good department that does all the research, that's for sure. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, George. Yeah, care to elaborate? Yeah, I, I, look, I've um, I've had a gut full of um, Monkey Gate this week. Um, <laughs> every talkback station, every rugby league show, every podcast, all they can talk about is uh, Monkey Gate. I, I actually spoke. Uh, um, I actually spoke to the boy Wonder. The boy Wonder's a similar age to uh, Reese and and to uh, Isra Man. And I got, um, let's say, the youth version of how Spencer would would feel. Uh, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch on um, the actual the actual slur because he's come out, he's admitted it, he's apologised. Apparently, for some people, the apology wasn't good enough. But he's come out, he's apologised, and that should be the end of it and, and we got a judiciary. But what's happened all week, the poor guy's been trialled by media. We had um, Latrell coming out. We had Nico coming out. Um, we had even Anthony Mundine coming oh, out. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. He actually defended it. Yeah, he yeah, defended he it. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, d- he did. He did. He did defend it. But still, uh, I find it really strange because if someone gave someone a head-high tackle and he was going to judiciary, I mean – Players wouldn't talk about it. Players are not allowed to talk about it. But, you know, what the the board, the, the NRL, the hierarchy hasn't said anything about about this. They're, they're letting, they're letting uh, these things um, just sweep, sweep under the, the rug, uh, lack mm. of a better word. Mm. So my question to you is what's the truth about all this? Because the media, the media knows the truth. They're too scared to say anything. Why? I'm assuming because of the ra- the racial part of it. Mm. And let me make it very clear that everybody in this room uh, completely uh, is against any racial uh, vilification and, and, and sexual yeah. and sexual mm. and sexual. But we also believe what what goes on on, on the field. Okay, let me say that because the boys haven't said that. I believe what go- what goes on on the field should end on the field. Okay, that's my belief, and let's, let's let's look at a bit of a timeline on something. So the media, the media has made me sick. I had a conversation with an impeccable source uh, today, and he wanted to tell me uh, what he told me because he believes that the media are doing the wrong, the wrong, the wrong, wrong, wrong thing. Um, there was um, a grand final last year, Nicola. And there was a team who were up by um, a lot of points and it looked like they were going to win. Mm. And um, you don't know this, but um, young uh, Isra Man and young Reese Walsh uh, are known pests. They, they flap their li- lips a lot. Uh, they're sledges. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I encourage it, actually. No, yeah. I encourage it. It's been there since they died. Yeah. Um, but there was some... Uh, I'm going to say it. There was, there's been some. There was some racial taunts when they were 15 or 16 or 18 up. There were some racial taunts uh, directed to um, a certain front rower in the Penrith team. Spencer Lenny. 
No, the the front row. Uh, the fish. No, the other Leota. one. Leota. Leota. And the and to Spencer Lenu. There was some um, there was some uh, racial taunts. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, racial taunts to them. And what 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 do men do? What do when this happens? Instead of doing what let's say Israel done, what did what did two two men do? Well, you had to tell them to shut up, or you put the shoulder into them if it's well, on the field. What they did is. Um, they went back and they went to another level and took something off them because they had yeah. it. Yeah, it took it took them off. Took took something what they mm. they wanted really badly, okay. And they and they haven't uh, they haven't got it anymore. Fact that, that this is a fact. Where I got it from, it's a fact. Okay. Wow. That particular game at Vegas, similar things were happening. Mm. Similar things were happening on the field, um, and I believe there might have been some uh, unfinished business. Um, so Spencer Lenu, unfortunately, um, just probably did it in the in the wrong wrong uh, setting. So obviously, uh, they they heard it. Um, uh, Israel man got upset, and we're we're down the track here, Nicola. Okay. So now we've got. We've, let's forget all this. It's happened. He's admitted it. All those things that I said were circumstances which are facts, I'm positive they're facts. I ha- the media are a disgrace which haven't brought this up, but we can't, we can't say anything about anything racial, okay? Now we've got, now we've got um, a punishment for this young man. Which we don't know what it is yet. He's, in, he's pleaded guilty, so I don't even know why he's in the judiciary. Well, when you plead guilty to something, then you just get given a... No, 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 you have to go to the... So you have to go to the judiciary. Okay. You still have to go to the judiciary. Okay, so, so <clears throat> my view is the young man has been... Trolled by media, he's going to walk in. I mean, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard numbers like 14, 16, 18 weeks. Nah. Well, let's 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 look at it that way. Let's look at it a different way. Okay, you tell me what is how do you compare what Spencer did and let's say what John Hopperwadi did, the finger gate. Which part? The finger gate. <laughs> oh wow! And, and Adi, tell tell them what because uh, there'll be a lot of young people not knowing what the finger gate was. What did John Hopperwadi do? Well, Up the guy's butt, basically. Yeah. So, so uh, there was a player called John Hopperwadi, and, yeah. and you know that you know his children. Mm-hmm. They're playing all over the competition. He was sticking his finger up. Uh, his finger, or his thumb. His thumb, his finger, I don't whatever. Know, something, yeah. uh, up uh, people's asses, and in in the in the in the idea of he's going to drop the ball or upset him. Okay. How many weeks did he get? Oh, I can't remember. Did he How get many weeks? Eighteen weeks or something. He got fourteen. 14 years. weeks. You got 14 weeks, okay. okay. Let's look at it a different way. So do, do you do you find that equal no. e- equal uh, what uh, Spencer did? <clears throat> Worse, better? What well, do you, you know th- what's funny? I know it's a different time again, mm. a different era again. Yeah. But I think about Les Boyd. Les Boyd. He okay. got 15 weeks, didn't he? Four? 18 weeks. Yeah, but what did he do? Kicking someone in the head on the ground. No, he actually elbowed... Uh, no, 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 in the jaw. No, 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 that was his second suspension. That was second suspension, yeah. But the international against England when he was playing for uh, Australia. Ah, yes. The first one. He got 12 weeks. He had four weeks on, then he got... Then he got <laughs> yeah, he hit the retiring <laughs> thing. Yeah, the retiring, okay. <laughs> I've got another one for you. He was a good player, you know. He very was good awesome. Player. He was, and I've got something for you uh, a bit later on, uh, Les Boyd. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I've got another one for you, and this is something close to, to Artie because I remember his reaction uh, last year or two years ago, okay. Latrell, he took the head off Joey Manu. Yeah. Mm. Smashed his jaw and his cheek, mm. okay. Yeah. Number one, do you find that equal or less than what Spencer did? I'm sorry, but I don't find calling someone a monkey anything. I no, can't no. believe that we've got judiciaries, yeah. courtrooms, lawyers, all this bullshit over someone being called a monkey. It's ridiculous. Just a monetary fine would have been enough. It's and ridiculous. Swept that and go yeah. on, see you yeah. later. Anyway. By the way, Latrell got, got six weeks for got six that. Weeks. He got six weeks for that. Okay. So my 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 complaint is this let's forget the top bit what i said about the circumstances leading up to this okay um there's no excuse what uh what he did um saying we we don't condone it but these things did happen and that could have uh uh tallied up and at an explosion point and he said it but now now we're getting to the 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 crux of it about how many weeks um and i and i'm dying to see 
how much because we're 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 looking on uh, the internet on the NRL app uh, every every minute to find out how many gets. I'm int- intrigued to see how many weeks he gets because I think he should get a fine. Yeah, but you know what's going to happen if he just gets a fine. You know how the media is going to blow up, mm. where our indigenous brothers are going to blow up. And they're going to be calling it racism and 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 so forth and so forth and so forth. So um, I think he's been trolled by media. I think the young man uh, is going to cop it for all the wrong reasons. And I'll say it again: I don't condemn it. But um, I, 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 we heard just mm. before what men do when they get racial slur, slurs. Okay, they stand up, stand up for themselves on the field, and they win games. So, so, so throughout the duration of this um, episode, I'm I'm going to keep my eye on to see what the what the outcome is. I'm looking now at the moment. The latest live update is that um, Ezra Mann's not in attendance because obviously he's in Brisbane. Um, he provided a written statement, <coughs> but he asked for it to be kept confidential yes. due to the sensitivity. Yes. Some of the statement was read out, and it goes like this. Uh, Ma'am recalled how Len Yu tackled Payne Haas before the incident and the statement says, I recall saying words to the effect of run it back at Spencer to Payne Haas. I then recall Spencer saying words, fuck up you monkey. I saw red after that. I was so angry that my mind was no longer fo- focused on the game. Is that, um, That's his official statement. Who's that? That's, I, um, I just read that verbatim okay. from Ezra Mann. It's part of the statement. Yeah, yeah. Part of the statement. If you can no longer focus on the game after that, you're not a first grade player. Seriously. Well, how do you get through life? Well, I don't know, but I'll say it again. And 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 I was intrigued when the person who told me this a couple of hours ago, um, uh, I'll say it again. What did a group of men do when to uh, serial pests? And let me tell you, Buzz knows that they're serial pests. The whole media knows that they're serial pests. This guy. Is on the other side of Australia, and he knows it, the, the serial pests. Okay, what did they do? They they stood up and they took something off him. The the biggest prize of the of the year. So anyway, look, I just I just feel sorry for Spencer, and I'll say it again: we don't condone uh, the circumstance, but um, I think he might uh, might be getting the rough end of the pineapple. That's just yeah, my opinion. I agree. Well, look, hopefully we'll be able to let everyone know uh, what it is. I mean. Everyone will know because yeah. they won't hear this until tomorrow, until tomorrow anyway. Right? But yeah, um, hopefully we'll know. But um, look, it is what it is. Let's. I don't want to give it any more Let's time than what Let's we already have. I just thought the top end <coughs> was interesting. Um, will be interesting to not only you guys, but because yeah. uh, I haven't told them this one, um, and and the listeners regarding what happened last year in the grand final and the and the yeah. uh, doings in that particular game. I just I just can't fathom how so much has been made of someone calling someone a monkey. Oh, it's, <laughs> that's it's what does gets my me. head in really. Um, but do you think it's going to – going forward now, um, players now, any inkling they get now of something, they're going to refer it? Well, what happens, is it if you, what happens if I call someone a seagull? Is that racist? Or yeah, what, I know, like I'm just saying is it <laughs> – No, I'm serious. <laughs> I know I wanna, you are. That's like, what funny, defines a monkey as, as a racial <laughs> I, slur? I, I, I'd like well, to know. I really feel sorry for Tyson Gamble because I really <laughs> didn't get to spend that every <laughs> oh, week. Oh, poor Tyson. Like, he's the best sledger in the game. Oh, like, no. Anyone yeah, can just um, take him out any time. How quick hands logo is racist. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. So the Vegas weekend. Uh, apparently, George, there were 80,000 viewers in the US on US television. Disappointing. Doesn't sound very good. Disappointing. Um, look, um, the man of feathers, I don't know if he was upset. Yeah, he was. He was upset. He was upset about it. Um, it's a lot of he, money to spend. He thought, for so yeah, he, he thought they'll, they'll be triple uh, that amount, but there were record um, viewers here in Australia. Yeah, yeah. was it over eight hundred thousand? Over eight hundred thousand. Yeah. So for a normal NRL game, it was a record uh, record. So I guess Fox is happy, and he says it's it, it's just the foundation to build on it. But look, I would be a little bit upset, especially on that complaining how much. It, cost them to put it on out of curiosity because i really don't care about the american look, audience look. but do you know anything about the breakdown of that eight hundred thousand? was that for both games was did one rate higher than the other yeah you know? the, the first one uh, rated uh higher and the second one a little bit lower yeah, and you know what else may have impacted 
the US ratings, the fact that they didn't get it until 17 minutes into game yeah, one. Yeah, that's right? true. Yeah. That might have turned a lot of people no, off. No, they no, didn't see true. the build up of it too, yeah, yeah. building up to it. Yeah. You know? There was a yeah, college game on, yeah. What time was it roughly in America at the time? Like Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah, far out. So Prime time. Yeah, yeah. And it was, and it was beamed all all across America. A lot of a lot of eyes on on. Uh, so did you say eighty thousand or 80, eight hundred thousand? Eighty. Yeah. They wish eight hundred thousand. Wow. That's eight hundred thousand is Australian numbers. That's one cult that watched it basically in America. <laughs> <Basically. 8, 000. laughs> it was one street. There's a, there's a new one cult s- that just formed now, the NRL cult that's formed in America. And, uh, um, anyway. Artie, Disappointed. Yeah. Now, I know yeah, how excited you are about the Dragons and we'll get to that. <laughs> but tell yeah. us about Zach Lomax. We've seen a lot. I saw that Shane Flanagan said he's not going anywhere this year. Yeah. Any negotiation, whether it's about extending or, or leaving, whatever, it's about next year, yeah. not this year. What can you tell us? You know what, I'm just getting, abs- as a Dragon supporter, I'm just sick of the media just bashing us every year. We had Ben Hunt last year, now we've got Zach. What ended up with Ben Hunt? He ended up staying. But he did He did, he did want to leave in it anyway. Yeah. And and what's his name? Flanner got to him and now he's staying. He's happy as Larry. He's ever going to honor his contract. Yeah. Right. Zach moved to, is Zach Lomax the only, can you tell me now, is Zach Lomax the only player in the NRL playing in a position he doesn't want to be in? Oh, uh, no, a lot of them. Exactly, but, but, but let's make Zach Lomax the big one. What about Stephen Crichton? He got told he's going to go to Canterbury and play fullback, but let's what keep that one quiet. What I don't understand is that all of this is over Zach saying, I'd rather play centre or fullback. How many players in the competition right now are in that situation, did, like what you just said. Did Zach Lomax look like he didn't want to be there? He, <laughs> no. Well, did you oh, see yeah, him no. I said something similar to you about when Ben Hunt scored a try in one of the trials. Mm. I think you saw the emotion on Zach mm. when he scored. Yeah. He didn't look unhappy. No. Did he? Yeah. Look, I think it's it's awful the way it's happening because he had the, one of the best games he's ever had. And if he's going to make origin, it's going to be – playing the way he is on the wing. And that's how Valentine's home started. And a lot of people, these media, obviously don't watch the game. But if you watch the game closely, Zach Lomax, every time Sloan took a run, Zach Lomax was moving back in the fullback spot. He was covering fullback as well. He's he's got a free reign. He can do whatever he wants at the moment. And Flano is just enhancing his game. That's his manager talking. His manager doesn't want him to go on the wing. He's he's going to lower his value. He's going to get less commission. I think it's manager driven. He's going to end up staying because he's going to be happy. After after he sees St George... Uh, climbing the ladder and and him getting these performances and starting to get a nine you know, looking origin spot, he's going to think you know what Flano maybe you're right man maybe you are going to fix my game because Bird's not going to be there forever Bird's there just now temporarily. Well, and Zach I mean, let's face it, he's not going to get an origin spot if the three fullbacks are fit, right? No, all of them. Because two of them will be playing on exactly. the wing, right? Yeah. But no, I for one they put him in the center. Oh, okay. the yeah. I for one. Um, I'm a little disappointed because I saw reports linking him with Parramatta. <laughs> so I, I would have liked to have got him for sure. Well, I heard one. One I heard is um, Canberra because he's from Canberra. Is Apparently, he from, his, his family's got Canberra. Okay. I've heard that too, but he's not going to go. He loves it there. He it's looks just happy. all talk. He looks settled. And I'm just happy. sick of the media just bashing us all the time. When we're losing, they're bashing us. When we're winning, they're back. Can't they give us some good news, man? At once, like Flano said, the best thing when they interviewed Flano. Uh, he actually got his backup. I think it was Karianis. He goes, has someone been talking to him? Who, who's that? Let me know. You're like, oh, yeah. they should go to the NRL. You're not supposed to be talking to him. He's way, contracted to 26. Only, so why are they the been talking only, to him? The only way to stop the media talking about you is to win games. Exactly. Yeah, you know, the, 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 You'll notice when a team's going poorly, Yeah. everything under the sun. Right? Yeah. You win three games in a row, it all goes quiet, they look somewhere else. Yeah. Exactly. You know? But they did win a game and they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but We're just copping at the luck. I'm this, sick of all it. Of this, all of this was before we yeah, but it, uh, They're just going to keep going. They just love bashing us. Like um, We're just sick of it. Every yeah. bloody year it's St George bashing. Oh, I don't care. You, it's just terrible. You, you played great. You got two points. Yeah. yeah. Zach's, and we'll see, Zach's on the wing and he had a sensational game. And so. Zach said the right thing. He said, look, I like what Flano said. He goes, I just picked the best 17. And at the moment, he's in the best 17 I've got yeah. and I've got him on yeah. the wing. And we saw the results. Look at the results. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, I um, hope he stays. He will. Crowds and apparently. Sorry, are... there's another thing too. There's other false reports as well because they're saying that he's on 800,000 a year or something. Well, yeah. apparently when he signed the contract, it was $3 million over five years. So I don't know how you can do your maths and say that's 800,000 a year. Maybe they're talking about third parties. Yeah, yeah it's bullshit. Uh, they're saying that crowds are up both in Australia and the UK on this yes. time last season. So crowds something's are, working. Yeah, crowds crowds are up, Nicola. Um, and 
Look, we, we were at uh, Parramatta. It was full house. There was a record crowd there. And uh, even in the UK Super League. Um, Warriors are sold out, aren't they? Yep, Every game. Yep. The, on the next three, I think. Next three. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought it was so long. These, are, these, are, these are extraordinary times for um, uh, the NRL. Can, and I, the Super League. can I ask you a and question? Um, and you can use any stadium as an example, but we'll talk about what you just said. We were at Combank Stadium mm. on Saturday night and it was a record crowd, mm. right? How many times has that happened since that stadium's opened? A lot, haven't we? All right. Every time we go there, nearly. So unless I'm missing something, it's the same number of seats. So how can the record change? <laughs> like every time in a stadium it's, it's here, a it's a new record crowd. There's the same number of seats. Yeah, but no, it's only a few, a few. It's only 20 Maybe or it's the corporate boxes. Yeah, yeah. A couple oh, of extra people. Cracks me up. Because they're standing room. You always hear it, right? <laughs> Even in grand finals, record crowd. It's the same stadium. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Now maybe they count the security guards. You know, the guys that sit facing <laughs> no, the crowd. They count them too, you reckon? Yeah, yeah, that's it, man. We only got six security guards this week, so six, six, six less. Look, I know a lot of us didn't do, didn't do too well in the tips. I know I didn't. <laughs> I'll give um, you an update on that, actually. But there's one thing that we all did tip that we all got right. Yeah. The refs are back to their old ways. Oh, yeah. Back to their old tricks. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey. Oh, yeah. You know Penalties, what? the six agains. I, like, the... I kept thinking about George every time because <laughs> I remember George said <laughs> what, what we saw in Vegas was fake. It's false. Uh, yeah. False. It's and false. I love it. It's when false. you said that and I saw the whistle going in, in, the, in, the, in the mouth of the referee every, every five minutes, yeah. I thought, yep, George was so right. Yeah. We're, so, we're selling the US a dummy because yeah. it's not really how it's played here. No. It was a joke. Some of the decisions, everything, it was just crazy. Um, I think all of them. I, I've actually got stats on that. Actually, I actually <laughs> looked at them all up. Um, but so in um, the Rabbitoh Seagulls, six penalties in the whole game. Whole game, six penalties, five to one. Jeez. Right now, in the what is it? Warriors Sharks or sixteen? Storm Panthers fifteen? Eels yeah. Bulldogs fourteen? Yeah. Uh, Knights Raiders twelve? Oh look, the Broncos Roosters actually had twelve. Twelve. Um, really? Penalties. Yeah. It's a bit more stuff. But, but still, yeah, 16, 15, 14, like the, the numbers are just ridiculous compared yeah. to six. And it's all the other stuff. It's not like the penalties are, are the stop start, but yeah. all the other things, the, the six to goes. Um, but nobody's surprised, right? Like no, we, we, said we said it. it. We said yeah, it. We hope they ref it the way they ref Origin and yeah. they did and we just wish that they would ref the whole season. Like exactly. That. How good would it be, honestly? Yeah. And the and the ruck infringements too. There yeah, was zero in it. one game. The Broncos Roosters had zero ruck infring- infringements. Yeah. How many did we see? Over the weekend, yeah. we saw oh. five in one game, four in the other. It was just heaps, I don't know. So, so the rocket Fritchman is, they're back, is back, six to go. Yeah, six, again, yeah? six to go, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just back getting to normal. Back. Back it just stop start. It yeah. just ruins the flow. Speaking of Vegas, apparently it cost $20 million. It cost the NRL $20 million to put that on. So my question is, Adi, $20 million, 20 million this year. Well, it's going to have to be more next year because they're going to have to top it. They're yeah. going to have to top it. It's going to be better and bigger, bigger and better. So, in the long run, now Valandi says it is going to be uh, a winner in the long run. But you know, if we if we sunk, sink, let's say we do twenty again, that's forty million. Okay, eighty, ninety, hundred million is a hundred million worth. Uh, or do you think we're going to get equal of that money back? Because 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 uh, Cariana says that the third or fourth year it'll be paying for itself. I don't believe it. Well, if he's if he's intelligent with inv- with his investment, and he will have learnt from probably some, you know, unforecast mistakes from what happened this season. He'll buy a half an hour TV slot prior to the kickoff, so that he knows oh. that everyone will see the kickoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually trying, and that won't be cheap. But he's ne- he's trying to negotiate one game on to fr- fr- a free to air in America, which yeah. is very hard to do because. Because Fox Sport is owned by Lachlan Murdoch, so he sort of gets his way there. Mm. He has a good relationship with him. Yeah, but he's trying to negotiate free to wear because he says that's where the, <coughs> the honey is. So look, good luck to him. I don't know what's going. That's going to cost him. But um, I also look, he's very he, bold. He's I, very bold. I also yeah. heard he's him very say um, on ABC Radio on Saturday afternoon, uh, it'll be four to six weeks before they announce who the teams will be for next season. Can't wait. I'm going. But in Australian TV, if if you get eighty thousand watching a show, it gets axed the next week, doesn't it? 80, <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. 80, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So what what makes them think that this won't get axed? Like what what would they want to 
pursue this if they're only that's, getting 80,000 80, viewers. That's 80,000 viewers out of a population of 25 million. Exactly. That's versus 80,000 viewers out of 350 million. Exactly. So what, why would a, a TV the, the network Fox, mm, yeah, but the Fox take part, that gamble? The Fox part of it, yeah, good question. The Fox part of it, because of Lockie, it's going to be on. It's going to be on one one game a week. It's mm. going to happen cause, okay. cause, because of Lockyer, because of Lachlan Murdoch. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now the other one, you're right. Now when they look at eighty thousand, they're going to say, well, why, why would why would we put we can put a uh, a, a primary school game and we'll get more mm. more viewers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or a high school game and we'll get more viewers. I wonder what the betting outlay was for the NRL over that's, in America. That's that's that's, what that's it. Mm. He says he maintains that the NRL app. Some sort of app, and I, don't know, I haven't got it. He reckons um, it's flying off the shelf in America. Yeah, oh, okay. That's what he says. Now, how true that is, I don't know. No. We'll never find out. But he reckons that it's a really strong response, not only in America, but in the UK. Okay. Um, and some other parts in the, in the world. But that's what he's saying. That, that app, that's how he can judge success, he says. He's got big visions, hasn't he? He's got, look, try to give it to him. You know what? He should have been in charge of Super League. Honestly, <laughs> how it's going, this is what Super League always wanted, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so oh, look, uh, uh, he's, he's – in in um in the Feather Man, I, I trust. Yeah. In Volandis, I trust. Mm. Arthur, tell us a little bit about Bunker Watch. Yeah, I just, you know, I said at the pre-games, pre-launch thing that um, I want to keep an eye on Bunker Watch and basically any really bad bunker decisions that we see that – Potentially cost the team points. This will, be a, I thought, this will be a whole show at the end of the year. Yeah, well, look, <laughs> yeah. well, I saw I saw a couple this week, and I just want to run through you. Um, the first one was the Penrith no try. No. Oh, now yeah. look, <laughs> the Storm won eight two in the end. Yeah. But if Penrith scored, it might have been was it would have I've been six two at that time. Or yeah, it was I think, a little. Yeah, it was yeah. It was so they would have had the lead. It would have changed a little bit of the game. I think Penrith were robbed, and I think it's a possible two points. Lost by them. No, no disrespect to um, Melbourne. I thought they were the better team, to be honest. Team. But that was a really bad decision and it bunker? would have changed the game. Who was um, in the bunker? Did you know? I'm not sure. Okay. But, but uh, what, what's your thoughts? Do you think it was the right call by the bunker or do you s- – No, I don't. It's no. getting really confusing and it's getting really fine line. Yeah. And they say letter of the law. But surely there's got to be some discretional – Discretion in it because well Hughes could have got to him. There was no he wasn't impeded. It's he, yeah. he could have easily got easily to him. Easily got him. Yeah. Easily. That's, that's what and I'm that's saying. what I thought Shepard was. If you can't get to him, if the guy literally blocks you from doing it, but then the letter of the law, it's something about the inside shoulder or yeah, something, and that's what, and that's why they ruled on it. Ever Nothing since, to ever do since with this inside shoulder, outside shoulder yeah, yeah. crap came into the game, it's, it's, it's just joke. confused everyone. Very, exactly. It, look, you know what? Nine nine. People out of ten don't understand it because it's so extremely technical what they're talking about. So how do you expect in general play? Because mm. I can tell you that when they pass the ball, they're not even looking at shoulders. Yeah, maybe they're running to shoulders, but they're not looking. Well, I'll, at I'll shoulders. go one step further: is that nine out of ten people wouldn't even notice or see an obstruction until yeah, it's absolutely. called back. Yeah, absolutely. by the bunker, absolutely. The fans wouldn't even see it. No, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, because it's not that. an obstruction. <laughs> <laughs> if it is, you'll <laughs> see you. it. Right, yeah. it's obvious. Yeah, an obstruction is in obvious. real time. Yeah, so I'm going to give Penrith a point this week for them being a bit, a bit hard done by. So mm. they got my first point. Wow. There was another one, but really had no bearing in the game or anything. There was a couple of really silly decisions: Cowboys versus the oh, Dolphins yeah. game. Oh, there yeah. was a penalty try given, uh, and that just looked That's ridiculous. One. That's another one. Before you go on, I've got to do this. Casey Badger, shame, shame, <laughs> shame. How? That was terrible. How can you uh, rate that a penalty That's try? Terrible. I mean, I love my penalty tries. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. I look for them. Yeah. I, I call for everything penalty try. Yeah. But that is not a penalty try. It wasn't, it wasn't a penalty <laughs> the try. The ball broke. I oh, know. It's crazy. Well, I mean, it, and also like you know how we talk about con- controlling the ball mm. and and all that. And, and I could be wrong because I don't know. I don't know the technicality of the rule. But in the game that we're at, mm. the Eels Bulldogs, the Eels had a try disallowed because the Bulldogs player had a foot in touch and the ball bounced off his shoulder. So they said he took the ball dead. Oh, yes, yes. He took the ball dead. He didn't even know it hit him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but it, 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 it hit him, yeah. Yeah, it hit him. So yeah. very t- – yeah, again. I thought you had to have control of the ball. Yeah. No. no. But that's a knock-on bull- bullshit when someone – 
hits it and hits the back of the guy's head and they regather it oh and they God. say, oh, he lost control. But he didn't. the other yeah. guy didn't have control, so he really didn't lose control. Well, since, still, since, since, well, since, well, <laughs> it's all very technical, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> but Look, that, anyway, that, that decision was a bad decision. But then it balanced out because Kyle Felt had a try to sell out, which yes. I thought, <laughs> which was, which yes. I thought was a try. So yes. it balanced out in the end, so that's yeah. good. Oh, so, yeah, look, that's my in, bunker watch for this week. In terms of that game, it, it didn't matter. But, um, again, we always say, and I always said it last year, it will happen, mm. a grand final is going to get decided from the bunker. Yeah. I can just see it. Well, I if that Penrith Storm game was a grand final, I'd be really pissed with a well, the fir- Penrith supporter. Well, that has happened. Sorry. No, uh-huh. that's right, yeah. The first time it ever happened was when his mob yeah. played against uh, Melbourne. Of course. Oh, the, seven, the, seven, the penalty try. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but that was a penalty try. <laughs> that was a bad one. <laughs> that was a penalty try. Jamie Ainsco, wasn't it? Don't go there. It was <laughs> a penalty try. Don't go there. I watched it the other day. Don't actually. go there. His arm was here. He wasn't there. Anyway, no, I'm not talking about that one. No, let's, that look, let's, let's rip in a round one. Let's, let's go into it. the results, okay? So um, opening round one or round one and a half, however you want to look at it, uh, the Raiders upset the Knights 28 points to 12 at a sold out Newcastle Stadium where the Knights were really underwhelming. That was so disappointing. Yeah. Uh, I expected so much more from the Knights. They had a full crowd, first game, like everything was just buzzing around them. Yeah. And I think they just thought, okay, let's just turn up and play, whereas Canberra had other ideas. Canberra were impressive. I thought they were very good. They deserved the win, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Newcastle off their game big time. Uh, a lot of errors. There was a few errors in that game. Quite too, uh, There was a lot of errors in a lot of the games actually this week. It was yeah. very scrappy, wasn't First it? First round. First round, yeah. First round. But, yeah, good on the Raiders. Uh, a special mention to the new recruit Morgan Smithies came from England. In his first game, he topped the tackle count for the Canberra boys. He got 46 tackles. Oh. So that's pretty good for an Englishman on his first day. So good on him. Uh, but that's all I've got to say about that one, really. And, and Zach Hosking, he was a workhorse. I thought he played really well in, uh, in that um, game. In terms of uh, Morgan uh, Smithies, um, what you see is what you get. He's, mm-hmm. a, he's a hard work in there. He's, play, he's playing lock here. He's a front row usually in Wigan last year. He's got the the tackling record in England. Yeah. He's had it for, for years, I think. But he had it – sorry, no, he got it last year. He's just a workhorse. Yeah. Uh, Ricky, I think, took him off at some stage. Mm. But that's what you get. You're going to get just honest, hard working and and he just works. He works for this pack. Mm. Um, you know what? I think Newcastle thought it was just going to happen. Like yeah. It was going to happen. It looked like it, eh? Yeah, it's just, just going to happen. It was going to happen. And, look at, and at the start, it was happening for them. They'll, mm. they'll, they'll break in the line. Um, but Ricky done what Ricky does. Uh, this team is just a dirty... Just in, boys. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Spencer Lenny has been banned for eight games. Okay. Look, I'm not happy about it, but eight games better than 12. Still a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That, that look, I look, I feel – look, I honestly believed he was going to get 14 weeks. Um, yeah. Everybody was talking. Um, eight games, again, probably too much for mine. Yeah. For mine, this is me talking. Uh, but – Again, better than 12 um, and let's hope we move on. A third of the on. season. Yeah. Mm. A third of the season. Hope, let's just move on and, and, mm. and forget it and because um, this week was, was horrendous on, on the airways because um, that's all. And that this, this includes 2GB talkback. That's all people were talking about, like in favour and opposing. Mm. So um, I'm glad to, to push away from it and uh, he didn't get trialled. By me as much as I thought, so um, I feel better now, a little bit better. Just touching back on the uh, game, what did you guys think of the Simbining? Hudson oh, Young. Oh, Hudson Young. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, he deserved, did he deserve that? What do you reckon? It was. It was. A, yeah, I think so. Yeah. The I reason I asked, I think so, is because you know that one of my highlights is watching Ricky Stewart press conferences. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially when they lose, <laughs> they won good. this game, He's and of good. course, in typical Ricky Stewart oh, fashion, yeah. it's oh. us against the world. Oh, yeah. No mm. one gave us a chance. You know. Um, and why do you get Simbin for a push, mate? <laughs> it was a push. He goes, if that's a Simbin, I'm a monkey's uncle. It was a push. Actually, I don't know if he said monkey's oh, uncle. Oh, if yeah. he said that, it could be up for eight um, weeks. That's racial too, right? <laughs> uh, he said that was no way that was a Simbin, it was a push. He goes, since when did we start Simbinning players for pushing? <laughs> Typical Stuart, isn't it? Go, Ricky. Seriously. Look, everyone talks about um, – one thing I want to point out about Ricky, mm-hmm. right? Everyone talks about Craig Bellamy's record, 21 wins out of 22 for <laughs> – Round one games. Yeah. yeah, Ricky's up to five from six. 
So he's slowly climbing there. Really? He's, yeah, he's won five of the last six oh, um, five round of the last one six. games. Okay, so, right. five of the last six. So he's okay. getting there. He's going to catch up to Bellamy soon. Go, Ricky. One day. One day. <laughs> Look, uh, to wrap this game up so we can move on, um, Canberra are the best of what they do. They're, they're gritty. They're, grind, uh, they're grindy. They, they get you in an arm wrestle. They, they, they pull your leg. They'll pull your hair. They'll pull anything. They'll upset you. Um, they, they chase harder. They'll tackle harder, and if you don't do the same thing, by the end of eighty minutes, you're gonna be you're gonna lose uh, twenty eight twelve. <laughs> Simple yeah. as that. You know what I mean? Um, but Newcastle, um, yeah. I, I just think that there's too many cooks in there. Uh, they got to sort out the halves. Yeah. When that, once they sort out the halves, I think I think there's life in this team. I, I haven't ridden them off, but Canberra, if they keep on playing like this, I said the wooden spoon. There'll be no wooden spoon for it. They would have been super motivated too because they got kicked out of the final series by Knights. Yeah. So they would have had yeah. that on the wall. Can't yeah. wait to get these guys. So uh, yeah. Look, they would have been super motivated. And they've got and that's why was, this week. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I'm disappointed with the, oh, with, the Cam- with Knights. You would expect a, a fired up Canberra Raiders to come out, but they just didn't look like that. Adi, the first four rounds, um, it's really simple. If you tackle harder and run harder and chase harder, mm. you're going to win. Yeah. You're going to win. And this is what Canberra does. They chase harder, yeah, they yeah, run harder. Why not? Yeah, yeah and, the, and, the, and that's and that's all she wrote, basically. Yeah, sure. So, and look, it's only round one. I I, I wouldn't write off uh, the Knights. I think they're a good, still, still a good thing. Yeah. It was good. It was fun. Uh, do it ask, Adi. Okay. Do it Friday, do Friday afternoon uh, in New Zealand, the mm-hmm. Warriors were leading 12-0. Sharks came back to win 16 points to 12. Oh. What happened there? Mate, can I tell you something? I was watching that game and I thought the, the Warriors were really good. They started really well. And then the Sharks, uh, man of the match for the first half, Jackson Ford, um, absolutely destroyed Warriors. Jackson Ford plays for the Warriors, you know that. Yeah. He dropped the ball three times yeah. right close to the line and then one close to the other line and, and that, I think two out of those ended up in tries. He just demoralised <laughs> poor Warriors, all that hard work he did. He had an absolute shocker, Jackson Ford. Yeah. But Cam- Cronulla hung in there. They yeah. just hung in there, hung in tough. And fantastic win by them. Yeah. It was really good. Yep. Uh, the only standout for the Warriors was Disney. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Aladdin for Noel Blake. Um, he was really good. But to have 70% of possession... 13 out of 14 sets, close to and, – and only have, what, two tries out of it. Yeah. It's pretty disappointing. It was, I yeah. can see a little – of some bad habits of the old Warriors coming in there. I was a bit worried about that. They sort of – Yeah. They, they started getting a bit – once they got the lead, they got a bit scrappy. Yeah. Look, the first 20 minutes I thought um, Warriors by how many. Mm. Um, for, some re- for some reason something clicked in the second half and – Cronulla looked like they were world beaters. Yeah. Credit, credit to the Sharks. The def- defence was just – that's yes. what won in the game. In yes, the yes. The defence was and, phenomenal. And, and, you, and you asked, uh, can Fitzy improve this team? Well, maybe this is, this is, this is the year where he starts you – know, his, his theories, I, I his actually, philosophy starts kicking in. I actually feel really bad about that because even though no one wants to acknowledge this, Fitzy's season starts in week one of the final. Doesn't it? <laughs> if they could finish no, no, first, true. they yeah. could finish true. fourth. True. Yeah. It doesn't matter now. True. Cronulla season starts in week one of the final. Yeah. That's where they'll be judged yeah. based on the previous two seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Mm. Uh, look, uh, Roger was a little bit disappointing. Um, Sean uh, wasn't his usual best, unfortunately. Can I can I uh, give some flowers uh, to uh, Talakai? Talakai. He was very good. Yeah. He was very good. Uh, especially that try he scored where he got off the ground, mm. where he passed the ball and got off the ground and, yeah. and scored it. That was a that was a big uh, big uh, change. And uh, off the bench, uh, the one, the man we, we were looking uh, looking for, Rudolph. Yeah, he uh, he actually um, st- stood up. He put up his hand in the corner. He, and he got stuck in and he uh, started smashing them. And yeah, look, it, it wasn't well. a very big score. It wasn't a very big uh, score, but look, they won. And they, and they look great, and uh, Wade even he uh, came off, and we don't know the difference that Wade yeah makes. that's true. And if he's injured, if he continues to be injured for a while, it's a big piece missing in this uh, team. And Ford won't play again like that. Yeah, I'll tell you now, Ford won't play. Like no, that. I hope not. That Kurt, was, was Kurtwell was a little bit disappointing, and look, maybe he's not into the uh, systems and the structures yet. But mm. I wouldn't worry about this team. One one guy from Cronulla I want to mention um, that. 
bald guy with a headband, Tom Hazelton. Okay. I thought he was really good. The minute he came on with Toby Rudolph, that's when the game swung. I thought he was fantastic. That's when he swung, yeah. Yeah. So good pick up. Uh, he, he did 131 see. metres in 13 runs. Really? Yes. Whoa. So that's pretty impressive, man. Pico Hines made a really impressive He was good too, too, yeah. Um, he, he did a lot right tackle. Some dropouts he did too, some yeah. where he played it real. Um, yeah, it's good. And look, following that one was uh, definitely an upset, especially after Cameron Munster pulled out with a yes. groin injury. But uh, when was the last time we saw Penrith being held to, to nil? Okay. Exactly. Eight nil okay. over the Panthers in Melbourne. Uh, didn't see that one coming. Well, it happened actually in round 22, nine, uh, to, to 2022 <laughs> against Melbourne oh, at yeah. Bluebet Stadium. Wow. Because I was I was interested about that. I go, when yeah. was the last time I heard the nil? And that that came up. So the last time Panthers were held scoreless was that. against Melbourne, round 22, 2022. Look at that. Um, but uh, yeah, unbelievable. You know what was freaky about that game? Did you notice the one incident where? Um, the Penrith were going to do a captain's challenge and the referee talked them out of it. He said, no, 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 you know, you're, not, you're going to really? lose, you're going to lose. Anyway, then they showed the replay mm. and if it was Taruva, if Taruva actually did do the captain's challenge, Penrith would have won it. No. Yeah, it was It was a really strange call. It's That's like the referee said, are you sure you want to challenge it? Are you sure? Like he was making them put what, doubt in their mind. Why is the referee doing that? I don't, I don't know. know. It was the weirdest thing. They should not be influencing. Like Sheck was, uh, no, no, what's his name? Taruva was so confident and then the referee just put some doubt in his mind. Then he just backed off. And then the actual commentator said it, they said, if they actually challenged that, they might have actually got it their way. The referees should not be influencing. Yeah, it was weird. Like Sutton's a weird referee. Yeah, he is. He's weird. Sutton's a weird referee. But uh, when was the last time you saw Leota and um, the other guy, Fisher Harris? Uh, yeah, very quiet. Quiet, hey? What, what quiet. a defensive effort from the Storm, though. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Super yeah. defense. Yeah. Uh, on this game, you're right, Nicola. If you tackle harder and run harder, like we keep on saying, the first six, five, four, five, six rounds, you're going to win. And they sure tackled harder and they sure yeah. ran harder mm. and they kept on turning up. Um, uh, look, uh, in terms of Penrith, I, won't, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, Ivan's changed again the system just ever so slightly to accommodate for some of the, some of the players who are not there. It might take them a while to understand that system because they haven't got that. So the two centres now, it, or everybody uh, on, the outside, uh, on the outside are very similar players. So the two centers yeah. are very similar. They're just straight runners. The the two edge back rowers are very similar. So what he's done is just change the lines and change the system to accommodate for the players. So give them a couple of weeks, and and, and I wouldn't worry about it. They'll they'll be back. They started but slow last season as well. They did. They did. But look, the salary cap is doing what it's supposed to do. Just pull them back a bit. Yeah. Pull all the big teams back again. Little bit. That little bit. Yeah. Can I just add one thing, guys, before we go on this game? Uh, one of the dogs rejects, uh, Remus Smith. Uh -huh. He actually had a really good game. They, get, they, uh, they start me. He, sto they he, scored start a, me. he scored the only try and saved a try. But um, I don't know if you guys already knew this, but he was the son of Tyrone Smith. Remember yeah. the South? Journey really? Man. Yeah, he played for Balmain. I, I can tell you who he played for. You know who he played for? <laughs> South. Cowboys, Hunter Mariners, Warriors, Balmain, West Tigers yeah. and Raiders. And I, believe, I believe he's a player agent now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or manager. Hunt I think so, yeah. Real journey, Might be a, yeah. manager. Tyron Smith, yeah. Hundred used, used to see him at the Sackville a lot back in the day. There you go. In Balmain. Yeah. Okay. 188 NRL games, 21 tries. He played 188 games. 10 games for New Zealand. So. Oh, you Kiwi? Yeah. Well, that tries. So, yeah, the good old Remus Smith. Yeah. I didn't know he had that. I didn't know that was his old man. I, so. I only learned that a couple of years ago because I heard them say it during a match. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was solid. He, he had a really good game. Both centres, even Nick Meaney. I thought he was – oh, another reject, sorry, the two rejects. He was <laughs> – Nick me Meaney had a blinder. Um, Tell me about it. Well, um, they're trying to sign him up, re-sign him. So I was hoping St George would try and get him because he's fantastic. Would you take him if you got, um, at Parramatta? Nick, Nick Meaney. Meaney? Absolutely. I yeah. like him, yeah. He's solid, isn't yeah. he? I'm surprised that other clubs aren't yeah. chasing him. Yeah. Nick Meaney's very good. Yeah. Nick Meaney's very good. I think you're unplugged there. Yeah. While we're um, talking about the Bulldogs – Next game, George. That's the game we win. Saw we were there. We Eels were there. Bulldogs. Uh, <laughs> Eels won twenty six points to eight. Tell give me, what, we were sitting next give, to each other. Yeah. But tell me what you saw. Look, tell you what, give me, give me your view, Nicola, because I might be a bit scathing. So, uh, give me your views. Well, f it, for me, it pretty much went to script. I said, I said a week or two ago, on paper, it's a game I expected Parramatta to win. Um, they were good without being great. They were solid for a first-round performance. They focused on completions, possession, f 
field position. They got all that right. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen more points, more tries, considering everything I just said. Um, but they didn't really, you know, last season they finished the team with the highest offloads. They didn't really play any high risk footy on mm. Saturday. So maybe they're working their way into the season. I don't know. But I mean, it was it was a solid performance. The Bulldogs were disappointing. Um, I think the forwards. At best. I think the forwards. I think, and I was telling you, we were talking a little bit before off air. I've got a bit of an opinion on Steve Crichton, right? Mm-hmm. I think he's the best centre in the game. I think that's, I don't think anyone can argue with that. But I don't think he's the player that the Bulldogs wanted to buy. And I'll tell you why. Because he's a centre, right? Mm-hmm. The best centre in the game, sure. But he's not a game changer. He, he won't change a game with his kicking game. He won't change a game with his ball playing. He's, he's not a half, right? Yeah. And that's not to say he, he, he can't evolve into that player, but it won't happen playing in the centres. So for me, if, if, they, if they're banking everything on him to keep him in the centres, so he scored a try, right, on Saturday night. That was all kick out. That was a great move. At the end of the day, whoever was left centre was going to catch that ball and put it down, yeah. Yeah. right? I think he's being wasted. I think they should move him to fullback, which apparently is what he wanted or wants. Mm. And then maybe um, the other the, – everything I just mentioned that that I said, you know, what, what they need from him but you're not going to get from him at centre, that's all Matt Burton. And he's been a miserable failure in his first 18 months or whatever it is at the Dogs. Yeah. He he was the Dalian centre of the year the season before he went to Canterbury. Mm. So for me – um, Burton's not a 5'8". It's simply not working. He should go back to the centres. Crichton should go back to fullback and maybe play Sexton with Hutchinson in the halves. Yeah. But um, for me, the Crichton experiment, um, I mean, he's very limited with what he can. So one thing Parramatta did well was they starved him of possession. That left edge of the Bulldogs, which is pretty powerful. I know Addo Carr went off at half time. Well, well right? you've got, you got kick out Burton and Crichton on that side. So and that's Addo a, Carr. Yeah, and at her car, it's a yeah. pretty lethal edge. Yeah, but but Paris simply starved them exactly. in possession four times, and they were, I think, and they were ineffective. Seven, yeah, because of it. They they scored two tries from two mistakes, which mm. I think is disappointing from Paris' point yeah. of view. Mm. It seemed a bit soft. Uh, maybe I'm being a bit scathing. I don't know, but oh. I'm just telling you what I saw, and I'm telling you what I think. Um, that was a Parramatta team without Sevo as well, who's their leading try scorer. So. Um, look, as a fan, I'm happy with what I saw. At the end of the day, you want the two points. Yeah. Um, but having said all of that, the dogs, like I said a week or two ago, um, on paper, Parramatta should win because the core of this team has been together for a few years. Mm. The Bulldogs haven't. Yeah. Well, this is an entirely brand new team and it's going to take time for them to gel and learn their systems and know where everyone's running. We all know that, right? Um, so they'll definitely improve. Losing out of the car didn't help them either. Um, but I think one thing the Parramatta did well was they they kept Canterbury strike players basically ineffective by starving them of possession and they yeah. made them do a lot of defending. Yeah. There was absolutely. a lot of repeat sets. There was a lot of not, no high-risk plays at the end of the set but rather just kicking it deep and making them work it out. Mm. That's what I saw. Yeah. Look, I'll let George take over, but just a couple of stats out of that game to show how dominant the Eels were. They completed 40 out of 46. So that's pretty yeah. good compared to the Dogs, 24 from 43. So just nearly 50%. So that's pretty poor. Um, and the offloading, like you said before, 17 offloads made to three. So Parramatta were pretty dominant. They controlled the game and they're looking good at this stage. Georgie, over to you, buddy. Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 um I enjoyed the afternoon, the record crowd. Was a yeah, how was the atmosphere? It was good. A yeah. little, little bit too hot, we got uh, some, yeah. especially we, first half. We got sunburnt in the first yeah. half. Yeah, yeah but at, after that it was – At half time the sun dropped behind the stand and we were okay. Down. Yeah. Um, look, the good thing is um, Parramatta started well um, and got two points because last year this time we know that they uh, lost, I think, two or three in a row. <laughs> Four out of five. Four out of five and, yeah. and just put them in the back foot. But in, in saying that, I mean, this team – well, this team on that day, on Sunday – didn't really get out of uh, second gear. Um, there was there was one player playing on one leg, uh, and if he played on on two legs and shot the blind sides, uh, Bulldog could have been in a hell of a lot of pain. That that's worth mentioning as well. I didn't mention hell of a so lot of Moses pain. Uh, strained his groin early in the match. 
Mm. So he stayed yes. on, he played, but yeah. he didn't do any kicking. Mm. Mm. Yeah. He actually did some kicking late in the game. Yeah, like he, got, he got a bit better, but yeah. he wasn't. He wasn't. He started running and he stopped. Stopped running. Now, if Moses shot the blind uh, or shorts and uh, exposed the Ado car, that would have been a lot of uh, trouble. Now, with this uh, with this Bulldogs team, what what don't we know? We know that uh, they've got no middles because we couldn't get out of our our, our twenty. And we're not going to get out of our 20 all year because we've got no middles. Mm. So there, there's there's one thing, okay. Um, they reckon uh, they defended really well. Everybody's told me they're happy that the defence was really good. Well, they played a, a, a Parramatta team which which was playing with their food all through the game. 80 minutes, they were just playing with their food. Mm. They didn't get out of second gear. They didn't get it out of second gear, Parramatta. Because if they play like that next week, they're going to be in for a hiding. Who's next week? Penrith. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, no, no, no. They were thinking. No, coming, no, no, no. Adi. Coming off a loss in Penrith. Too. No, no, Adi. They were thinking about Penrith. They were playing Canterbury thinking about Penrith. I'm telling you now. Okay. Oh. And they played well. And and this, they're up. I said this, they, I said this year they're not going to make uh, the eight. They're going to make the eight all right. They'll be top four. This team's a good team. Yeah, they're a very good this team. This team's a very good team. Trust me. Okay. I mean, Junior Polo. Jun, junior Polo. He's on the replacement bench. He came on in the twentieth or thirtieth minute. Okay, master stroke by by uh, the worst coach in the competition. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Okay, uh, uh, Campbell Gillard. Campbell Gillard comes off. Okay, and all of a sudden the role doesn't stop because Campbell um, Junior Polo is a bigger man than <laughs> than Cam, Campbell Gillard. Yeah. Gillard and quicker and mm. better, and a better play the ball. Okay, so the role didn't stop. He just it dr- drove us crazy. Okay, uh, Hutchison, a halfback, you reckon? He struggled, didn't he? Yeah, I'm not sure. But, but then halfback. again, but then again, where would you put To him? be fair, Reza- J- uh, Regis. To be fair, with everything that we just said about possession and field position, it's always difficult for the halfback on the, back of, on the back of that. It is George. to kick out of your own. Out of yeah, your own when you've got zone, no right? forwards, you can't play. Yeah. Well, then, then, then our, our our fate is sealed this year. We've got no forwards. We're not going to get. We're not going to get out of our quarter. Our faith is sealed. If you're going forward, you can't win a game. We'll win a game. We'll beat someone. Saints. We're not going to beat Saints. <laughs> They're going to smash us if they if, if the Saints play like they did, did uh, last week. Did you watch the press conference of uh, Kennery? Yeah, he's happy. He he actually he was happy. He was happy. He was yeah. happy. He actually that's said, what makes me that makes me even he, even sick. Makes he, me crazy. He actually said, and I quote, "I couldn't be prouder of this team," and I thought to myself. Well, if they won, you'd be proud of them, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, no, but but what does he see? What? Uh, kick out. Not the same person he was. Just stands out uh, on the edge and waits. He got one good ball away. Okay, that doesn't happen all the time because they haven't got a halfback to, to set that up. Burton, doing what? But Burton. He's, he stands in one spot all through the game. Okay. If you look at there's Burton's, nothing in, like he's supposed to be a creative player. If you look at Burton's numbers, and I don't have them in front of me, it was terrible. Of the, course, the, terrible. the number of touches, the of number of kicks, because he's not a five eight. The mistakes that yeah, it was it was he's just not a five eight. It was okay, terrible. Josh Curran's good. He came on, he changed something. Josh mm. Curran. Okay, but the rest of the forwards were inept. Yeah. Okay, Reed Marnie. You can tell the story because uh, no one believed me. Tell me, the, tell us a story about yeah, Reed Marnie. Apparently, apparently, he's been shot around. Uh, um, yeah, but apparently St George, uh, Gus's approach St George. I haven't seen, I haven't seen that, but I'd take him back. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. So Gus is shot, shopping him around. That's what so, I heard. So I this, this, I find that hard to believe. This, well, no, don't find it hard to believe because we've seen it. It's history. Second year into the yes, into his contract. we've seen it, haven't we? See, I talk from facts. Uh, uh, you can't deny history. History always repeats. Okay, Gus is a scrupulous man. He's still taking the. Uh, he's still taking credit for for Penrith. Okay, <laughs> he's a scrupulous man. That's why this is not going to work. I haven't seen he's, that. Because he's he's not. So so who's coaching the team? Well, because because uh, Sor- uh, not. Who's his assistant coach? S- uh, Sorato. No, uh, Jeff Taylor. Uh, Jason Taylor. <laughs> Is he there? I think J- yeah, JT. JT yeah, JT's there. JT's there. JT's mm. He's a very He's a very good assistant coach. Good assistant coach. He's, He's a very good assistant coach. Been at the Roosters. But, but he, he, peels, he peels the oranges. Mm. You're crackling for some reason. Yeah, no. He's, he, peel, he peels the oranges. He does. Got, he's got nothing to do with the team. So Rad is the, the assistant and Gus coaches the, the team. Okay, yeah. That's why it's not going to work because he had a chance of signing a good coach. And we saw one, what one off-season did to, to that team 
but we can't control the man. Okay, okay. I don't want to keep on going on about it. Um, they were poor. Uh, they were pretty disgraceful. The that twenty was it twenty six should have been forty six. Um, Parramatta didn't get out of uh, second gear. I don't want to talk uh, any any anything about any of the Canterbury players because I thought they were, they were all uh, disgraceful. Can I uh, give some flowers to some of the um, Jamin Salmon? Especially had a really poor game. He yeah he when they moved they he was in he was at playing lock so he was on the edge and then he was having a really bad game so they pushed him out a little bit uh, further he just kept on missing tackles so I mean you know from bad to worse. Can I give some flowers to Dylan Brown? Uh, he's gonna. He started repaying. Uh, yeah. Uh, Adi, Good to see. And he's gonna repay. He's gonna repay Parramatta. Was this Serraldo's Penrith defensive coach? He was. I mean, yes. everything about that guy was based around defence. Well, wait a minute. He suggests all the ball you had, and let's 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 go backward. Why did Parramatta have so much ball? Oh, because we kept on dropping them. We couldn't get out of our quarter. But anyway, forget that. Don't forget all last ball... season. Reed Money had the highest missed tackles. Like yeah, the defence continue. seems to be going backwards. He continued to have under the under Serraldo. So he says that um, the defensive effort that. The, the Bulldogs put up to re, uh, to re, to repel this uh, team or to make them uh, like Amy score twenty uh, six points is is a, is a credit to Bulldogs. I suggest it's a dis, it's a disgrace <laughs> for giving look, so I'll, much ball away. Look, I'll be honest with you. For me, I I actually, in, in all honesty, I put that down to more Parramatta being ineffective in attack. Absolutely, they didn't get I, out of second gear. I didn't they see, didn't get out of second gear. I well, did, it wasn't I, a quality game. I didn't game. see a Melbourne style defensive effort no. or, or Cronulla. You well, know what Moses I mean? was injured though, so don't yeah. forget. No, so. no, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not knocking. It. I'm just saying, mm. I, I didn't see the Bulldogs defend brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't see if much Mitch was thrown well. at them. If Mitch, Mitch stopped running, Mitch mm. just, just shoveled. If he, I was, I was looking uh, at a car when he was uh, injured, and I'm going, oh no, they're going to shoot the blind. They're going to go the short. He wouldn't get. He wouldn't run, so he couldn't go short. He couldn't go on the short sides, okay. Mm. And then Dylan, Dylan sort of works the middle all the time, okay. So it didn't really happen. And then they they changed the team around. But let me tell you, if if Mitch was well and shot the blind, that would have ripped him apart. <laughs> but he didn't do it. Look, yeah, um, uh, yeah Mitch Mitch was, was good. I think Cardi was very good. He was. Um, yeah. I'm gonna swallow my my words on Lassick. He's probably the the best option. He had a good game, didn't yeah. he? I've got to admit, he did. Yeah. I've got to admit, he had a good kick. He hit hit one forty twenty, which once again changed the game again. Yeah, um, it was a very good. Game. I think that was the second or third tackle too. He kicked yeah. early for that one. Yeah, uh, Hop Hopgood was a, a little bit quiet, but I'm I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, and look, they they played they played well. They got two points. They move on. Uh, Canterbury, you'll see what I what I'll mean, but. This is this is the best they're going to get. They're not going to get any better. Who have Canterbury got? I don't know, I'm Sharks, I think. Sharks, yeah. Mm. So we'll cop another forty. You don't know. You reckon more? It's a shark park. Mm. <laughs> the sharks. sharks, yeah. Look, <laughs> let's move on from this one, eh? <laughs> hey, big, big we've forwards. <laughs> we've talked about it long enough. Yeah. Um, the next game was the Gold Coast Titans and the Dragons, Artie. So up on the Gold Coast, Dragons twenty-eight points to four. They're calling it an upset. Yeah. I gotta say, for me, this was the performance of the round. Watching, oh, really? Yeah, I, okay. I, from what I saw, the dragons. I just saw energy. I yeah, saw they were a different. There team. was just this intensity. Uh, mm. There was a real Flanagan all over them. Um, yeah. Look, it's worth pointing out. The Gold Coast had a couple missing. Yeah, Foran, so, Fafita, and uh, Campbell. But so. I don't know that any one of those players would have would have made mm. a difference. To be honest, um, St George were, were on the front foot. They were mm. happy. Yeah, you know what absolutely, I mean? yeah. They were just playing high energy. Um, it was just um, – it was good to see. It yeah. It was really good to see. I yeah. think a lot of us may have underestimated it. They have, yeah. And um, I think Ticketek's getting flooded with people ringing up for grand final tickets, all the <laughs> Dragon supporters <laughs> or, or trying to get tickets now. No, it was a good performance, uh, good start to the season. Um Absolutely wrapped for Tyrell Sloan. He's been copying it from Dragons fans, basically. Uh, and he came out and played a, a blinder, scored three. Uh, Jacob Little was my sta my little star. I think he's a yeah. fantastic hooker. Um, and um, all this talk about Zach Lomax, how good was his game on the wing? Oh, he was, was excellent. amazing. Um, he won't be there longer. I think I think he's just learning. I think Flanagan's just teaching him what the winger position is so to enhance his game. He's, he's going to be a superstar like we all knew he would be. 
but it was a top performance, solid players. Um, another Kenry reject, Fatella Mariner, I thought was very impressive. Yeah. Nice offload there. Couldn't stop smiling, that bloke. Funny that, <laughs> He eh? was just laughing all game. Funny See? that, three yeah. months ago. He had a rough trot. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. funny that, three months ago he wasn't good, he couldn't play. Let's get him out of the club. Uh, all of a sudden... One of the best Mate. performances of the weekend. Running hard, popping it. It was, it was really it's got nothing good. to do with a coach. Old, it's old really got nothing good. to do with coaching. Pathway's good, mate. Pathway's yeah. good. He knows his stuff. He knows then, his stuff. And then we've got uh, Blake Laurie and, and Luciano coming. Uh, so that, that pack is going to get even stronger yeah. and bigger. So we're looking good in but, the performance, uh, that's for sure. They look, he had his band reduced. Yeah, so he's yeah. back this week. It's yeah. only for one week now. Um, but, yeah, it was a f- fantastic performance. Um, it was still not sold on Bird and Centers. But we'll see. Give him some more time there. But yeah, look, Titans losing Kieran Foran early would have hurt. Um, Flanagan versus Hasler. Uh, that's a, that was a pretty poor performance for a Hasler side. It, it like, was. It, um, it was. Yeah, you think it they'd be a bit more stiff in the defense. But I think the Dragons were like in the previous game. I said, you know, Parrot controlled the game, but they didn't do much. I think in this game, the Dragons choked the mm. Gold Coast. Yeah, they did do a lot. Like they, they. Forced him into playing bad. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And, and Cole Flanagan, I've got to mention him too. He, yeah. he was – I think him and Hunt are going to form a pretty good combination. Well, three months ago uh, he couldn't play that kid. Well, maybe – well, look, Hunt's a good halfback. Uh, the halves you had at Canterbury with Kyle weren't yeah. as good as Ben Hunt. So maybe well, that's what's going to Nothing to do with coaching. Uh, uh, well, it's his father that's coaching him, <laughs> so he know, he'd know him better than anyone else. <laughs> we, all, we all suspect that he'd be better under his father. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, on the Carl thing, I'm very happy because you know what I – I thought about Carl yeah. in that time that he that he broke down and cried. Disgrace that was horrible. Disgrace of the Bulldogs. That was Disgraceful. Mm. Um, I won't say too much about the Gold Coast. Um, Des is trying to um, get every sort of joy out of this team or trying to make them uh, a dour, ugly team to to watch. You know what I mean? So look, by, by round ten he'll he'll succeed. That he'll, <laughs> he'll pull any fun out of this team and make them a percentage team. You know, no drop balls, and you know what? They'll bumble and stumble and probably make the eight. You know mm. how Desi does it. And let's go on to the good stuff, okay? Um, uh, Flano has got this ability to change it, to change his teams in the style or the person who he is. <laughs> um, he, I call it bully ball. Cronulla, when they won the comp, they played bully ball. Um, it was a little bit different because the opposition, uh, Melbourne, played bully ball as well. Guess what? He succeeded. Um, I don't know how he succeeded, but he succeeded. This team is just a very physical, hard-running rugby league team. You didn't mention uh, Francis Mola. Oh, yes. Yeah, he was the good guy's too. a wrecking ball. He is. I didn't know he was that good. And his brother. He's got the footwork. I really? like his brother as well. They're both good. I'm not going to say nothing about Raymond Fatale and Mariner because he's no good. He, we'll, we'll kick him out soon. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, piss him off. All I want to mention is, is two players. Mind you, Sully was amazing. Oh, um, I want to ask you about him in a moment. Uh, yeah. Now, Sloan, what he did, he can do every week because – he just sat behind Hunt and when he saw an opportunity, he just swung through, mm. okay? So he didn't have to actually make physically a break or he would swing around, chime in and they caught him short on, on, on you know, strip him on numbers. So these are things that Sloan can do every week. Yeah. So, you know, he, he put less pressure on him. So he's just going to get better and better and better when he gets more confidence and confidence and confidence. We saw what Zach did. Yeah. And, and Zach is there to help Tyrone, especially on their dirty carries. If you notice, he was the first one back from kicks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Zach was and he yeah. was carrying that out of the, yeah. uh, the danger zone. So He was everywhere. Well, and that's coaching. Yeah. That's coaching. Um, Dragons, if they keep on playing this hard nose. Rugby league, they're going to win more than they lose. A I'm lot of it, now. a lot of it hinged on Ben Hunt having the game. Ben's good. Ben, Ben, Ben mm. is a genuine, genuine organizer, genuine yeah. controlling halfback, and then he's got, even at this age, he's got the flair to to, to do him, his, do something himself. You know, make yeah. a run or something. So he's very rare in terms of halfback. You can't find these players. That's why everybody, when he, everybody thought uh, he was unhappy, everybody was jumping on him because you don't find players mm. like Ben Hunt. 
you know. Yeah. And I he mean, looks happy Gus, too, Gus would love a Ben Hunt. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they're good at it. And, and, you know what, they scored 28 points and um, Titans, I don't think, ever looked in the game. I, I will give my flowers to, um, uh, what do you call him, Big Tina? Big Tina. Big Tina played well. Yeah. If you look at his stats, he's he, he was everywhere. Um, he was trying his hardest. Mm. I wanted to ask you about Moses Suli. Yeah. How do you think he played? Yeah, he played well. He's a he's um getting to the next level. He's always had the ability to be a good centre, but he just drifts in and out of games. The reason the reason I ask is because on. we all know his history mm. and he's played for a few clubs. Yeah, when he's playing like that, you know he's happy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, and yeah. if he's happy, that means there's something good going on behind the curtain there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, actually, unlocked him. he's a good indicator mm. of um, of that. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah, absolutely. No, he he seems really happy, and all of them did. All of, all the so players looked. The locked. Dragons uh, actually uh, left Saturday night leading the comp party. I know. Until <laughs> Sunday afternoon. Bloody Sunday. There's something to be happy about. Bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Saw uh, the Cowboys uh, rip the Dolphins apart, forty three points to eighteen at SunCorp Stadium. It was a pretty one sided affair, but the Cowboys, yeah, they looked good. They looked fantastic. Yeah, and uh, the only Egyptian uh, cowboy supporter in the in Australia would have been extremely wrapped with that. Um, nice try assist by the hammer when he kicked it into the what is it, Luki? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he thought he was playing for the Cowboys, he, and then he realised shit, I'm playing for the Dolphins now. Um, Gee, I've got the wrong jersey but, but on the uh, game. He had a bit of an off day. Um, yeah, he scored time. a nice one in the end, but still, it was a bit. Oh, he set up one, but the Cowboys look so good. The back row, yeah. uh, Luki Cotter. Um, what's his name? Um, Nanai. Luke, Fantastic. I love Luke. Yeah, they're a good team. They're a very good team. And, uh, yeah, it's back to the 2022 form. You know well, what I mean? What impressed yeah. me was in the second half how they really turned it up and brought it home. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That was it was an interesting brilliant. comment by Wayne Bennett in the press conference um, that, he, that he touched on twice. He said, well, you know, five of their six tries came on the last play. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. It's like when a coach says, oh, well, they scored two tries from kicks. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What, what's your point? Yeah. You know what I mean? 50-50 yeah. um, ball. Yeah. It's a 50-50 ball. That's what, what, the, that's what they mean. A it's lot a of those aren't ball. though. Mm. Yeah. Um, you didn't mention Tom Dearden. Tom Dearden, uh, I, yeah. I, yeah, I, I think the, the man yeah. of the match. Um, you you, meant, you said that you didn't weren't impressed with Chad but everything runs through Chad. Yeah, yeah, no, no. He, he was good. But it was, drink water was good too. Drink is Drink good. was great. Drink. You know what? This, this team is back. This team is back to to two years ago. Uh, they'll be they'll be making a they'll be making a, a big impression on this competition. Uh, they look great, and yeah. there's no way in the world they're going to go backwards. I'll tell you now. And, and I think the Dolphins as well. Just looking at their lineup, gee, they got some talent there, right? You know, Farmworth and Flegler. Uh, I thought and Flegler had yeah. a good game. Yeah. Um, again, give this team a bit of time. Yeah. And they've got an ageing pack. I think they're, yeah. they're getting older too, the players. They're going to lose a couple on this week. So yeah. against the Dragons, they've got the Dragons this week. But is it too early to call Zach Laybutt the future PNG immortal? <laughs> Is it? Uh, you know uh, what? He's, can, uh, can he's looking good. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, but can I offer some advice? Maybe. Unless you want to ruin the guy's career. Yeah, yeah maybe not. <laughs> like you guys maybe did with not. Ilias. I think we've yeah. Maybe lay off put the, the future more stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, I don't think um, I'm going to say this, and it, I'm gonna, it's going to sound strange coming out of my mouth because I know who the coach is. I don't think they're prepared. I don't think um, Dolphins were prepared. Honestly, mentally prepared. They didn't look good anyway. Yeah. So I don't know why. Maybe it was really hot. I don't know. But um, you know, I hate and I, and I hate Chris Butcher too. Butler, whatever his name is, the ref. Oh, the ref. Yeah, he's rubbish. Anyway, let's yeah. move on. Well, let's uh, move on. And, uh, of course, the um, the West Tigers <laughs> had the buy. Yeah. Uh, for Did this they round, they played well. The Tigers. Uh, they yeah. Had a few they got good two hit-ups. points. Yeah, that's it. Um, but yeah, look, that wraps us up for this segment, uh, controversy corner. So. Um, always great with you guys, and we'll see you in the next segment for our uh, Ask Artie. Okay. See you boys then. See you guys. Hey, Ask Artie, boys. Good to see you guys again. Yeah, it's, it's great, mate. Um, looking forward to our next part of the round one wrap up. Definitely. <laughs> Ask Artie. Yeah. Ask Artie. Okay, so look, one thing I want to ask you guys now that we're here, we finished our first round. What? Who stood out for you this round? Which team? team actually? Which team stood out? I'll say the Dragons. The Dragons? Yep. yep. For me. Cowboys. Why? That was a complete performance. I know the yeah. position were a bit weak, but it was yeah. a complete performance. Okay. 
You, Nico? Why, um, why the Dragons? I would, I would agree with you if not for the number of points they let in. Yeah. The Cowboys. Yeah. Um, I thought the Dragons were a complete performance considering what I was expecting. Okay. Um, and that's, that's not to, you know, tarnish them or anything. I just I wasn't expecting them to be as good as they were across the park. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I had a look at the games too and I included the Vegas games too. So I oh, okay. That. Yeah, and I thought Manly for me were the standout. I didn't yeah. expect Manly to be as good as, as they were. They were pretty, pretty good. Um, so they're the ones that – what about which player? Is there a player that stood out for you this round? Hmm. I mm. think about that one. The player that stood out for me while you guys think about it, who I thought was absolutely outstanding, um, and I'm going to be biased here, was... Um, the fullback for St George. Yeah. He's my... Yeah. yeah. Sloane. Sloane. That, that's what I was going to say, actually. Yeah, yeah Sloney. Uh, the amount of pressure he's, he's had yeah. um, with his performance and that, it's like um, if you don't perform in the next few weeks, you're gone. Like, And he stood out. Did he um, score three tries? Scored three. Yeah. Good support play, and the most pleasing part of that was his defence. Uh, he knuckled down and stopped a few tries as well. So yeah, he was my star uh, for this week. What about you, um, George? It's gonna be a strange one for old Blake. Yeah, he was amazing on a losing on team. a losing team. Yeah. He was so good. He was so good. They couldn't. Go- you know what? I don't. I don't. I I can't remember the last time I've seen him being controlled by another pack. Yeah. No Packers can control him. No one yeah. can handle him. You know, it's funny. I was trying to think of a – I thought there has to be a standout player in Melbourne considering what yeah. they did. And yeah. you know what? I can't think of one. It yeah. was that good of a team it was performance a team effort, yeah. Yeah. that yeah. I can't pick one individual. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. It was, they just played as a team. Well, yeah. They tackled together. I'll they, say Craig they, Bellamy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're absolutely go. right. Absolutely that's right. That's one. where it comes from. That's where yeah. it comes from. And lastly, boys, who disappointed? Which team or which player? It could be anything. Was there a disappointment oh, for you guys? For sure, the dogs. The um, dogs? And the whole team. Okay. Including Gus and the, and the coach and staff. Okay. So um, by, by far, by far. The dogs? Yeah, yeah. by far. My by expectations far. weren't that high on the dogs. For mm. me, it's South. South, yeah. yeah. Makes I expected sense. more yeah. in that game against Manly. Not yeah, to take um, anything away from Manly, but I expected, as far as an individual player, I'm not sure. I wouldn't. Pick someone from South. I think we saw some worse efforts. Mm. I'll say Matt Burton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Matty, the Bulldogs. Fair enough. Another whole off season at five eight. I expected a bit more. Yeah, yeah. My my disappointment was the um, Knights. I honestly yeah. thought, yeah, first game in Newcastle against Canberra. You know, they had such a good season last year. Kick it off with a good win. Same they with the Warriors as well. You know, you know what? And both those teams, the Warriors and the Knights, they weren't terrible. They weren't, but I know what you mean. Is it? Is they it? They weren't a, terrible. Is is it? Is there any chance that both of those teams and maybe one or two others as well um, came into the season thinking, "Gee, we're on a roll. Look how good we finished last year." Yes. And maybe yes, there's a drop in intensity or yes. some sort of expectation that wasn't there. It was clear the Knights thought that, what well, you know, well, let's just keep on rolling from last year. Just keep on rolling, yeah. and and you can see it. The ball went, ball went left. Uh, to, Pon- to Ponga and Best, and it just didn't happen. Yeah, it just wasn't happening. It's like you mentioned that. Um, not not to pick on the Bulldogs. I'm sorry. No, no, go for it. It's like, it's I'm like the what, first one to pick on no, them. No, but it's like what you mentioned how spade. you mentioned uh, in the last segment how um, Canberra had it on the wall or all, all, all off season. This yeah. is the team that that knocked us out. But you know, I almost saw that in for Taylor Mariner's performance for the Dragons. So he mm. had something to prove. Yeah, you know, after everything he's been through, because that that went out, went over for a long time, mm. and he just looked like someone, maybe not so much as refreshed, but he had a point to prove. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and some of these some of these teams, like the Warriors and like Newcastle, maybe their intensity wasn't where it needed to be. Mm. Not only because of that, anyway. not only minutes, but anyway. their opponents did have that More. intensity to drive it home. They yeah, need, they needed two points. Yeah. Something they want to make a point. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Look, we 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 said it last week. And we'll say for the next four weeks, it takes four to five weeks. Before yeah, the comp yeah. settles down. You know, yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, it's gonna be like so. That. A lot of things, a lot of things that we we see now uh, are pretty false, um, except the Bulldogs' performance. <laughs> 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 well, righty. So what I've got is I've got Josephina. She actually got some rumours for me. Oh, she got me one rumour, and uh, I'll just read it out to you. 
Uh, apparently she saw Zach Lomax at the KFC the other week. Zach Lomax? Zach KFC. Lomax. Yeah, he loves his KFC. She heard him uh, during the order. The lady asked him, drumstick or wing? He said, yeah. no, no wings. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, hate wings. He hates wings. He hates wings. Anyway. Was that the same one where they saw Dylan Brown last year when he chose the breast? <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> That's yeah. the one. That's so the famous, close. That KFC is good. Yeah, a lot of rugby league players so go there. Close, That's for sure. Yeah. And Cornelius from Newtown is trying to get in touch with one of us. He wants us to he wants to borrow a uh, Penrith away jersey for next year's Mardi Gras. Penrith <laughs> yeah. away. He's, he's a he's a Rooster supporter. Oh, he just loves the pink. Oh, the pink. The pink. Of course yeah, he does. Pink, so. Of course he does. Cornelius. So, yeah, Cornelius loves Cornelius. his pink. So yeah, no, next year, mate, we'll try and get you a jersey. Um, now I've got a bit of a segment here called Who Would You Rather. We've used it before, but this is specifically for Canterbury, and I'll, I want to test it with you guys. Come on, bring it on. Bring, it, right? on. bring it on. So bring we've got a, a pre Gus. And a post Gus team, right? So I'm going to go through all the positions and I'm going to say who would you rather out of these positions, right? Mm. So pre Gus, we had Corey Allen as a fullback. Mm -hmm. With Gus, we've got Blake Taff. Who would you take out of those two? Taff. You take Taff? Yeah. You too? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Corey Allen's played for Origin, so. Yeah, he I played know. for the Roosters. So you take Taff. I, being a little bit uh, generally biased here, I, I would, if you asked us, um, as a whole, mm -hmm. pre-Gus, post-Gus, I'll say post-Gus because I know what's coming. We just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. yeah. Nothing's yeah. coming. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's coming. You'll see. All right. One of the wings have got Nick Meany or Blake Wilson. Mean. Meany? Mean. I go, I go – Wilson's been pretty good. Very good. Wilson's been pretty good. Yeah. Very good. I mean either one I'd be happy with but I, I think Wilson's been pretty good. It, okay. Reckon, Mel Re reckon uh, Wilson could make Melbourne, Melbourne team? I think he, anyone who goes under Craig Bellamy will become a better player. Yeah, yeah true. Better player. Can you make the team? Though? Well, again, would would you think Remus Smith and Meany would make Melbourne when they were playing at Canterbury? You know. Yeah. Look, I think Meany's a really good player. He is. He is. Um, so I, I just like I like what I see with this young kid. No, I don't good. know. He had a no, good season good. last good. year. No, no, I agree. He's good. He's um, very good. He's I think he scored good. a try on Saturday, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He's very good. Uh, yeah. yeah. There you go. One of the centres was um, Will Hopoati. So Will Hopoati or Jacob Caraz? Caraz every day of the week. Caraz. Caraz, yeah. Well, I, I thought Hopoati was a very reliable centre. He didn't, never made many mistakes. He was good I defensively. I thought he was quite good. He got a bit I, older in the I end. I don't but think he played well since he left Manly, to be honest. Yeah. I right. thought he played he put some good performance for Canterbury. I thought he was very good. Um, not explosive. Um, yeah, Carazzi is explosive. Yeah, he's explosive. Yeah, different type of players. Different, one more defensive. Different player, different player. On the other side, we've got Steve Crichton or Nick Kotrick. Well, uh, that's pretty easy. Best center in the world. Absolutely, Crichton. <laughs> best center in the world. Yeah, th this was an interesting one. Dallin Watine, uh, Zalesniak or Josh Adokar. Oh, you're killing oh, me. No. Definitely Adokar. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, Adokar's had a brilliant career. We're not seeing the best of him at the moment. He's got the speed. Yeah, oh, definitely Adokar. I like, I George? Like, I like the dirty carries. You like I'll the dirty go, carries? I'll go, I'll go, uh, Tandy. I'll go the lesbian. Oh, see, the lesbian? See, like, the way I look at him, like, I think uh, he was not that effective at Canterbury. He wasn't. He didn't. He wasn't. He wasn't playing Which well. Which is why he was released earlier, yeah, too. He wasn't playing well. He wasn't playing well. But, I mean, overall, I mean, I pick out a car every day. The I get it. I get it. <coughs> but it comparing but players' form when they were at Canterbury and when they are now, it doesn't mean they were bad players. It's just oh, no, 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 no. I thought Latina was good at Penrith I mean, before he went to Canterbury. He was good at Penrith. He just had that little bit of a If I had a choice of one of those two players, I would pick out a car. You'd pick out a Yeah. All right, now we're down to the 5'8s. We've got Jake Averillo or Matt Burton. I still think... That's an interesting one, isn't it? I still think... Look, I'd pick Averillo simply because... I pick five, Matt eight. Burton every day of the week, but at centre, not at five. Yeah, yeah. Averillo. Averillo? Definitely. If we're talking he's about the six, player. he's a good player. It's I pick Averillo. Oh, okay. He's a good player. What about uh, Kyle Flanagan or Drew Hutchinson? <laughs> Drew's on Drew's on a half. That's my opinion. I don't think we saw the best of Flanagan. Um, we did. Seven. We did on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but he he um. <laughs> Very similar to what I've been saying for a long time about Luke Brooks. He might be a better six yeah. than a seven. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, he is. Yeah. Mm. He is. Now, we're looking at the front row. I don't even remember this guy, but no. apparently he was a bulldog. Off a of hockey, Ogden. No. He's oh. a Parramatta. Ogden? Is he? Or Max yeah. King? He probably come off the bench. Oh, that's right. He did too. Which one's better, Max King or Ogden? Oh, neither. No. <laughs> come on, George. <laughs> 
<laughs> Max King was heavily sought, man. There was a few, few teams sniffing around Max well, King and you signed him up for three you? years. He got extended. Yeah, these are you? You know. Well, come on, mate. <laughs> I'll give him nothing. He's all right, mate. He's, <laughs> he's a hard worker. He's yeah, a hard worker. I'll, I'll say Ogden because he's playing, he's playing at Parramatta now and I watch him play, but I actually didn't know who he was yeah. at Canterbury. I would have picked Max King based on that time period. Yeah. Because I think King's a good player. I yeah, think I think King's, King's good. King's okay. King yeah. tries. You know what? I've got no problem with King. He's all heart. Actually, yeah. I don't know if Ogden played on Saturday. I'm not sure if he was in the He's on the bench. He usually comes off the He's bench. He's on the bench, yeah. 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 Now, these are lineups I got off the Instagram mm-hmm. on the NRL online yeah. thing. Um, one of the, the hookers, we've got Reed Marnie or Sione Katoa. Gee. Where's he gone now? Katoa. Well, I pick Reed Marnie every day of the Katoa. week. Me too. Sione Katoa. I didn't. I should have checked that one out. He might be Super League. Yeah? Oh, okay. No, I was just wondering about that um, one. I'd pick Marnie. But you I pick Marnie? Oh, I haven't, Me, seen, me too. I haven't seen him play good in a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. But um, I would pick Marnie, yeah. Yeah. What are you, George? Who would you go? I haven't seen Marnie play good in a year and a half of it as well. I'll go Marnie because I, I know what he's got, but I don't know if he's going to produce it for us. Yeah. All right. Who would you rather, Jack Hetherington or Pawaisi Famosili? <laughs> I can't say his name. Yeah. <laughs> Hetherington. Uh, th- yeah, that Pawasa. He was at St. George. He was at the Roosters. Yeah. And then he went to somewhere else in St. George. Uh, Dolphins. St. George, Dolphins. And then he's at Bulldogs. Um, yeah, he's a bit a bat- of a journeyman. He's a battler, Nicole. He's a, he's a battler. Oh, he's a big I'm lad. I'm picking Jack because I can't pronounce that name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> so he's a big lad. I'll go Jack. You go Jack? I'll go Jack. All right, this one's some very um, interesting one. Adam Elliott or Viliami Kikau? Well, Kikau showed nothing. Kikau's for me. I'll, if I was coaching it, I'd put him. I'd, show, I'd introduce him to the Reggie's coach. So I'll yeah. go. Um, See again, Adam Elliott is good. I'd pick Kikau because I know what he can do. I just haven't seen it. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 you, and you know and you what? Won't, and you won't. And, and 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 let's be. Let's put, let's add some context to this. Yeah. How many games did he play last season? About half a dozen. Nine or ten. Yeah, fair, yeah. So let's let's be fair about it. He's. He's hardly played at all, right? Yeah. Mm. So let's give him a few weeks to okay. set up a great try the other day. He did. No, no. Um, it was a good pop. He missed most of the season. He did. Yeah, he, no, did. He, did. Right? he did. He did. He did. Yeah. Um, Adam Elliott, I was surprised Canterbury let him go because I thought he was pretty good well, at he, the Canterbury. Well, so. that's a funny story. No. He wanted no? to move to Newcastle oh, to be with his girlfriend. Oh, that's right. Who yeah. then left Newcastle. <laughs> Go to Canberra. <laughs> yeah, but she lives in Newcastle. <laughs> oh, wow. She lives in, she, dro- she commutes. Oh, God. Uh, the next one's pretty easy. Corey Waddell or Jacob Preston? Surely you get Preston out of yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, Preston's good. Yeah. And finally... Yeah. This one's a no-go, uh, an easy one. Josh Jackson or Jermaine Salmon? <laughs> I'm a massive fan of Jackson. Jackson? Yeah, he was great. Yeah. He was retired but uh, he didn't really get get let go. Was well, he, he was pushed, pushed out. He was pushed to pushed retirement out. but yeah. pushed out. he was always – he always played 100%, gave his heart, didn't yeah. he, on the field. Yeah. So. Although Salmon's a premiership winner. Yeah, <laughs> true. Three-time premiership true. winner. <laughs> true. <laughs> Three-time. So, so based on no, what you – he only played in one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So based on what you've all said, Canterbury sides improved. Basically, you've got a stronger team than what you had. So yeah, Gus is doing the but job. But I believe yeah. it has. And, and, yeah, it I, has. and I believe, post, I believe post-Gus is better than pre-Gus. Mm. Mm. But I, I have said this all along. It's going to take time, yeah. a few years, mm. right? And I know that he cops a lot of criticism because he talks about – we call him pathways good because he talks about the juniors and bringing players through and everyone says, yeah, but he's signed 30 players. Mm. Well, he's got to fill the roster now. Mm. And he's got to fill it with experienced players. You know, you plant the seed. And they say, when's the, when's the best time to plant a seed? Well, 20 years ago. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you want the tree today. Mm. You know, that's what he's doing, I believe. So yeah. uh, it's for me, and I know you hear this all the time, but for me it's a three to five year project. Yeah. Um, and we're into the second or third year now, second year. Um, and I, the, for me the only, the only possible hinge – that could come unhinged is I'm not convinced on the coach yet, but we have to be fair with him as well. You know, like it's his second season in first grade. Yeah, and who was, well, was he improved? Wait a second. Wait a second. You got coaches like Ricky Stewart who have been coaching for 20 years. He's won nothing since his first season, right? This is his second year in his entire career. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Ricky, uh, Ricky improves has improved lots of players uh, over the years. I'm sure he has. And I can't. None comes. There's, to a, mind. there's a lot of players that made Origin reps. From the Canberra Junior system, from Ricky, 
Kotrick, I remember, made his debut. Ricky, Whiten came from Ricky's, Canberra. Ricky's one example. What about he brings up what about players. Uh, we could sit here and name ten or twelve coaches who have with twenty year careers who mm. didn't do much, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, even just recently, you know, Justin Holbrook, Michael Maguire. Look at what he did at the West Tigers. We know he's better than that. He's better. Mm. This guy's in his second season. Yeah, he, he copped a lot of pressure for two reasons: mm. a because he was at Penrith. And B, because he was highly sought after. Yeah. Right? Um, it's like anything. It, it takes it takes time. Like he's, you've come in. I've always said it takes three years to build a team, whether it's soccer or rugby league. It takes three years to build a team if you're ripping it apart and doing it from scratch. You come in, you've got a brand new philosophy, you've got brand new systems. Unfortunately for him, I think he's got Gus behind him as well, which could be maybe hindering him yeah. unless they're on the same page in terms mm. of what they believe. Of course they're on the same page. And now Whatever got, Gus says goes. And yeah. now they've got a whole new roster, right? Mm. And you just can't expect everything to click straight away. It's not going to happen. Mm. What The part that is disappointing is that in some of those purchases, be it the Burton, Marnie, um, you know, Addo Carr, kick out. Let's leave kick out out because he missed most of the season. Yeah, you expect better from those guys, mm. right? At some point, you've got to pull the plug on Burton. Unless he does a miraculous U-turn, it's not working. Well, Burton, he's you... playing six for one reason because he's got the biggest kick in the game. But tactically, yeah. he doesn't appear mm. to be a good kicker. Burton, what you see is what you get with uh, Burton. So he's, he's not crafty. He's a great he's center. Like, he, well, he's, well, in the Penrith system, yeah. So he's not a crafty, he's not a ball player. Um, he's a good runner. So, yeah. Put, put put him in centre, but the only issue you got there then is you need someone inside of him, yeah. giving him quality. Would you agree that so. Saturday afternoon's game was a great example because Canterbury lost the possession and because they lost the field position battle? Mm. Someone with a boot the size of Burton's should have been able to maybe in a little bit of a better way kick him out of trouble. Well, yeah. In terms of a he's got such better. a big kick, a little bit better right? than he did, yeah. Yeah. He went high rather than going long. Yeah. Most most of his kicks. Mm. What, what happens when you're when you're on your quarter? What does Mitch do? Somehow they they bringing that out as a dirty carry. Yeah, mm. you know yeah. What I mean, it's yeah. never never halfway. Yeah. Never, and the first tackle would tackle zero is on the halfway. And when 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 Burton kicks it, halfway is the zero tackle. So yeah, you're under so, pressure all the time. So I would expect more from two or three of those guys, especially Reed Money, because I know what he can do. I watched him come yeah. in the grade right. Um, but with everything else, I just think, and it's hard, and, and I've been there as a Paris supporter, but I think you just need to be patient probably for another year or two. Yeah, look, I know uh, it's easier said than done. I haven't, I ha- look, I, I, I keep on looking, I keep on watching, I keep on expecting um, until I see something. And look, I know that underneath it's bubbling. Yeah. But there's only one problem. You can, cu- you can bring a youngster to first grade, but you have – the same coaching staff and yeah. the same, mm. the same and, structures. And there's also you. instability because up until a year ago, a year and a half ago, you guys changed three or four coaches in three or four years, didn't yeah. you? So there's a bit of instability there. Uh, you know, things just take time to settle down. It's it's a bit it's a big. Uh, I know people will turn around and go, oh, look at the Dolphins or look at other clubs, look at what St George did. Yeah. You know, and I get all that, but that's a Premiership winning coach, and the Dolphins have got a Premiership winning coach as well. The dogs have got someone who's in his second year okay. in his career. You've you've convinced me to 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 wait and watch and look and anticipate. But let me tell you, halfway for the year, if we if they're dishing the same shit, and I suggest to you they will be dish, dish in, uh, dishing the same shit. I'm going to go hard on them again. I I said at the start of this season, to me, they're a 12 to 14 team. They should finish on the ladder this year. For the, yeah, that's but, you very know, ambitious. I reckon they'll, they'll, they'll be getting some timber timber work back in the, the club. I would, no, they're not going to get a spoon. spoon. I would expect 11th or 12th. 11th or 12th, yeah. okay. If they improve to the to the degree that I expect, and that's, we that's don't a, know. That's a, that's a good season, 11th or 12th. That's us. what I'm talking about. Okay. That, that's that's what I would expect. I'm, I'm not expecting miracles. Yeah, People yeah. are talking about making the eight and all that. I, no, I'm not no, expecting miracles. No way. I was um, g up a couple of weeks ago. No, not ago. you. Other people yeah, are talking I'll, about Yeah, I was g up a couple of weeks um, I told Daddy that I thought the spoon or close yeah. to it. No, the, they they look, the spoon's a tough one because I think 
every team has improved. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think every team has improved. Yeah. I know we're getting off track, sorry. No, 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 um, no. But, You've got a fair um, ball there. I, 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 I really I, like this and I, I'd like you to keep doing it with different teams. Yeah, okay, sure. If you're up for it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, sure, it's, a, sure. it's a good topic of conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah, the, the only comment I want to say about Canterbury is uh, they will improve, but if they're going to continue having a transit lounge and swapping players every five minutes, yeah. that's going to hurt them. I, yeah. I, I can't see that being That's good. what I was referring to with instability. Exactly. The, they, a lot, especially they, with players. Imagine being a player there now. Like we're hearing Reed Marnie's being shopped around. He's only been there for 12 months, for look, one season. And I already it's true because I'd like to get him back. Yeah, I know. Right? Me too. I'm but <laughs> I'll say this. If, if, let's say if that's true. Mm. He was a captain last year. I know. He was the you captain. Tell him Marin he was, was the captain. captain six weeks ago. Yeah. Right? Um, but if that's true, the damage that that's going to cause, not to him, yeah. to the rest of the squad. Yeah. Because it's like being in the mafia in the 80s, right? When, when a capo kills one of his best – when a boss kills one of his best captains, well, then every captain looks at each other and goes – how are we safe? Yeah, mm, yeah exactly. Gotcha. You know what I mean? I if they are shopping Reed Money, yeah. then every other player's – Matt Burton's going to go, shit, I haven't been impressed in here. Exactly. Am I on the chopping block? And that thought takes away from what you're supposed to be doing. It brings down into the mind. It brings down into the squad. It's a mm. poison. Yeah. It's the cordial theory that I keep talking about. Yeah. That's um, right, so I yeah. hope that's not true for their sake. Yeah. But I hope it's true for ours. Mind you, I haven't heard anything about yeah. it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, – they need stability. Yeah. They need stability. You know, th- look, they chose to sign a bunch of utility players. So Rauda said it in the press conference, we planned for this. Yeah. We did it so that we've got depth. Yeah. He was, talking, he was referring to Ado Carr's injury, mm-hmm. right, which he, I think he's back in round three. Okay. Um, he goes, we planned for this with the recruitment that we did yeah. in terms of signing utility players and, and depth. Um, let's see how it plays out. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. But I just think – I think any – New coach has to be given three years, yeah. in my opinion. And Dean Pay didn't get that. You well, know, Trent Barrett hasn't Pay. got that in either job he's had yet. That's true. Yeah. Um, That's true. I just think they need three years. And if after that, Dean well, you know Pay. what? Three years, you know, it's not it's not working. You know. Yeah. And from what I hear, they've got their junior teams are doing pretty well okay. uh, in the lower comps. They are. But if they're going to be letting them go, like Avarello and, and Malotti and all that, who make it into first grade, and they let them go after a year. Then what's the point? You know what I mean? They, you, they're the players you want to keep. At you least they extended them. Karaz. Yes, right? that was good. But that he came was, from Newcastle. He went from no, there to Newcastle then, and then back. But at the end of the day, no, he's, he he's a young he player. Bulldogs, Bulldogs Newcastle, Newcastle and then back. Yeah, North Queensland then back. Oh, really? North he's, Queensland too. He's a young player that they absolutely had to keep. Yeah, he's, he's doing so, well. But they need stability. They need stability, they really man. And it's well, just the, the youngsters are doing well and, and they continue to do well in the ball and the flag again. And the Reggie's... They were actually won on the weekend just by mm. two points. Mind you, I saw a little bit of that game and the Parramatta Reggies are good as well. They're very good. But yeah. so like, it was a but good game. You know the point that I was trying to make earlier about the Eels, when you look at the two teams on paper, one team, the core has been together for a long time. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that gives you such a huge advantage when you're defending, yeah. when your backs are against the wall. Mm. You yeah, know, when, no, no. when the guy inside you has been there for two or three seasons – yeah, the Bulldogs don't have that yet. Well, Parramatta's a, a top six Bulldogs, slash top the, four. The Bulldogs team. don't have that yet. No, yeah. no, no, no. That, that was the point I'm trying to make. Oh, they have you it. Know? They have it. So it takes time for all that to It do. does, absolutely. All right, guys, just to give everyone an update on our tips. We're yeah. All, we're all on four each. Of course we are. So me and uh, – what was it? Uh, me and Nico went ahead of you by a point yeah. um, at one stage because you went dogs and we went eels. But then you caught back on us because you had the dragons and we had the titans. So uh, just when we thought we got ahead of George, we caught up. Now, before I go, I just wanted to give you Manoli's three, oh, two, Manoli's ones. three, yep. three two ones. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. So what's Manoli got for game us? Game one was Na- Knights and Raiders. He liked um, Zach Hosking as number three. He got three points. Yep. Uh, Morgan Smithies, the Pommy, 46 oh, tackles, there got we two go. points. And Phoenix Crossland from the Knights got 59 tackles, so he gave him the one point. Beautiful. You happy with that? You reckon right. a good judge? Yeah, yeah, he's so far so good. Oh, that's good, mate. Now, with the Cronulla game, Cronulla versus the Warriors, yeah. he gave his three points to Militano, the winger. He thought he had an outstanding game. Screamer of a game. With Nakora getting the two points yeah. and Disney, Aladdin, uh, for Nul Blake. For Nul Blake. Getting the one point. Mate, if the team won, he would have got all three. 
Yeah, Epstein, absolutely. Yeah, he was, he was really good. It's just the team lost. Um, for the Melbourne game, he gave um, Melbourne versus Penrith. He gave Max King the three points. Right roll, yeah. The Bulldogs reject Remus Smith uh, <laughs> two points. And one guy we didn't really talk about too much, Taylor Mayne got the one point. I thought he was outstanding. Yeah, yeah he was He good. was really, really, was really, good. really good. Both centers so, one. Both yeah, centers I one. think they've got a good center one. Both uh, centers and one. And that. Um, for the Bulldogs and Eels game. All, all three points to us, of course. He gave um, three points to George Papadopoulos who <laughs> made the <laughs> sort of like it. No, no. no, no. He gave the three points to Cartwright. He thought Cartwright yeah, was Cardi really, was really good. good. Cartwright was good. Dylan Brown had to take over from uh, Moses Mitch. when he got a bit of an injury. So Dylan Brown got the two points. And were you guys bagging Lassik last week or something? I was. <laughs> yeah. I was. I was. Well, I'm sorry. I'm Manoli, sorry. Uh, he gave him the one point. Uh, whether he felt sorry for him or whether he thought he had a good game, I don't know. I'll have to ask him. But uh, He had a good game. He yeah, gave well. it to them. Yeah. He had a good game. Yeah, very good game. And for the last two games, Dragons, Titans, he gave three points to Jacob Little, the, heart, the yeah. hooker. I thought he was outstanding, set up the try. Tyrell Sloan, the hat-trick hero, yeah, got absolutely. two points. Absolutely. And everybody loves Raymond for Talamara, <laughs> got the one point. <laughs> together with uh, Zach Lomax. You couldn't decide out of those two. I thought they were both good. And in the final game, Dolphins and the Cowboys, uh, Jeremiah Nanai got the uh, three points. Did and two and the PNG future. <laughs> oh, that's right. We said we're not going to do that. But uh, Zach <laughs> Lomax. You can. You're just, you're just going to ruin, ruin his career. career. Destroy nah. his career. We did, we've destroyed Lockie's career oh, already. No, no, no. Jeez. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing him go this week, actually. Can't uh, wait, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, they're the three, two, one. So, yeah, we'll give you an update each each week and we'll see who gets the our golden Spiros Manoli, Manoli player of the year. Player of the year, yeah. That's it. Good All right, stuff. Guys. All right, well, that's it for uh, Ask Your Arty. And uh, thanks for that, boys. I really enjoyed that. That no was worries, good. Man. Thanks. Uh, and we'll see you guys uh, in the next segment for Crystal Ball where we preview the upcoming round. Too easy. All right, thanks. Okay, now we've got the tips and the tidbits. Let me let me know when you guys are good to go. Well, yeah, I'm ready. You ready, George? Yep. All right, three, two, one. All right, welcome back, boys. Quick hands for our crystal ball segment, yeah, uh, part yeah. of episode sixty-three, where we're going to preview the upcoming games for this weekend's round. Um, let's rip in. So kicking off on Thursday night, we've got the Brisbane Broncos hosting the Rabbitohs in Brisbane. Mm. Suncorp Stadium should be a good one. Two, two uh, first up losers. Yeah. Losses. Oh, that sounds terrible. Losers. <laughs> two first up losses. Um, uh, just a couple of things I want to mention, guys. Adam Reynolds, I don't know if he's going to play. He might get the green light, so he's still on yep. an injury cloud. So just keep that in mind. And Jack Whiten's not going to start. Apparently. Jack's not playing. And apparently round three there's penciled him in. So a okay. couple of key players there. So what's your thoughts, guys? This is a really hard one Tough for me. Tough one, yeah. It really is. I'm going to lean on Brisbane because of the home ground yeah. advantage. Yeah, I was thinking that. But I, I'm really expecting South, if, if they've got any fire in the belly, this is where we're going to see it, yeah. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't trust the Bunnies, unfortunately, until they show me um, – until they show me um, – Something I'm, I'm going to keep away from them. Um, Broncos, uh, they're back home. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they actually played too well at, in Vegas. Yeah. So it's time for them. Are they are they full? Are they full uh, house? Are they anyone injured? Anyone out? Well, Adam Reynolds. Adam Reynolds. Adam Reynolds uh, he's be. recovering from an injury, but they say he should get the green light. But it's nice. it's touch and go. I think. I'm, I okay. Um, look, I don't see any other winner. Who's a replacement if he doesn't play? Well, it's, I, don't, I don't know. It would be. It's Monday, so we haven't got team this yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. But anyway, look, uh, Broncos will win in, in, in Brisbane, I reckon. If Adam's out, I'll change my tip. Yeah, yeah. I reckon maybe Tristan Saylor might be the. Is he going to come up. in? He's a great player. He's been. He was great in the um, trials. If Reynolds is yeah. out, I'll definitely change my tip. So all three Broncos. Yes. Well, are we going to all agree again, mate? Yeah. We're going to yeah. go through the whole. Alrighty. All Next. right. So following that is uh, Friday evening. First game kicking off at five five thirty. Or 5.55, my eyesight's really troubling me. <laughs> um, Sharks at home hosting the Bulldogs. I'll go first, uh, Adi. Um, there's only one winner here. There's no need to talk about the uh, the away team. Uh, Sharks will win and win well, 13 plus. <laughs> I'm expecting a Sharks. Victory. Sharks? 
Um, Talakai has got an ankle injury, so he might be ruled out, but I doubt it. Um, so he, he's the only guy that's really under a cloud. Also, Josh Adokar's out. He's not back until round three. Yeah, Josh Adokar and Bronx Sherry makes his debut. Good is player. In, yeah. in the centres or wing? Well, they'll probably put him on the wing. Um, but probably Adokar's position. Yeah. No, it's Jacob Karaz might be switching to the wing and, oh, okay. and Bronson will go to okay. centre. So that's a pretty good he, replacement. He's naturally a centre, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great player. Uh, good signing, that one. And um, Jemin Saman uh, looks like he's going to be starting, staying retained apparently. There's a rumour there that he's going to stay I don't know. at he was 13. Found, he was found out in defence. Yeah, badly. yeah. But, yeah, Sharks, I think, on that one. Uh, following that one, <laughs> got, the, why am I laughing? Uh, Penrith are hosting Parramatta. Um, yeah, I'm going to Panthers. You've got the wood on them, man. Well, look, yeah. How come, many times have you beaten them? They're coming off – never when it matters. Um, <laughs> uh, they're coming off a loss. Um, and I just think they're too good of a team. I just think they're too good of a team. I think they'll win at home. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Panthers are a bit fragile. And we don't know – you know, they've said Moses is going to play, but we don't know yet. Yeah. So. Apparently he's been given the green light. Yeah. Yeah, so they reckon he probably will play. My, um, Brad Arthur might do a Brian Smith special. Actually, it wasn't Brian Smith the reason they changed the rules with the team list. <laughs> yeah. Because he used to change it an hour before the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going Penrith. Uh, Warimu Greg might be coming back for Penrith, uh, for Parramatta. Yeah. Uh, Scott Sorensen is going to come back in for... Oh, he's Panthers. back. Yeah, and apparently he's going to take the place of Luke Garner, apparently. Maybe. Yeah, they're looking at That's making right. a switch. That's about right. Uh, Mitch Kenny, he's also back. <laughs> they're, they're bringing their troops back too. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch Kenny's back. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, they've got a few coming back this week. So, yeah, maybe you're right there. But um, Eels seem to sort of just lift against the Panthers. I'm, I'm sniffing an upset, but... Oh, God. Something, uh, yeah. Give us something. Anything. If, if pa- Parramatta are going to beat the uh, Panthers, it's this week. With uh, They're currently on a bit of a slump. I'm now's now's big, the time to I'm get them. I'm not big on stats, but when was the last time Penrith lost two in a row? Yeah, Next true. week. Next week. Next week. <laughs> well, technically it's this week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if Moses was 100%, I'd pick Parramatta, but I'm going to go – I just realised Moses isn't going to be 100%, so yeah. I'll, go, I'll go Panthers. George? Uh, Nicola, the, the, the Panthers are playing a, a new system. Um, so they're still going to be a little bit uh, found wanting, a little clunky. Mitch Moses owns um, personally, uh, mentally, physically owns uh, Penrith. He's not 100%. Each doesn't matter. He'll be 100%. That's how, we, that's how we Mitch uh, rolls. And um, uh, Polo, uh, Junior Polo and Ruben, Ruben Cam- uh, Campbell-Gillard is going to flip the script Ooh. and rip out uh, Moses uh, and Leota's uh, hearts. Together, and uh, by the end of the game, the Eels will be just rolling all over them. Mm. Alrighty, so moving to Saturday afternoon, first game kicking off, we got the Canberra Raiders hosting the West Tigers in their season debut. Oh no! <laughs> Hard to tip against the Raiders, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Sebastian no. Chris is back, and he we is. don't. And we're really, fullback. We mm. don't really not, don't know what to expect from the Tigers because no, obviously yeah. they didn't play in the first round. Now the the fact that they didn't have a good Final trial, and then didn't get to have a hit out in week one. Could work against them. It will. Yeah, it will. Or they could do a dragons on us and just shock everyone. And really surprise us. So I'm, I'm so. going to tip Canberra. Yeah, I'm going to go Canberra as well. I think after last week they impressed me to be yeah. honest against Newcastle. Greedy. It was a packed Newcastle stadium, yeah, man. Yeah. So it was yeah, yeah. A tough win. Greedy, grindy, um, scrappy. Like I said uh, before, they'll pull your hair. They'll pull your leg. Yeah, um, the Tigers won't know what hit them. Ricky, Ricky will somehow have them as underdogs. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah Rick, sure. he'll find it. Uh, it's it's them against the world. So yeah. um, they're uh, they're flying. They'll be uh, four points by the end of the uh, weekend, and there goes the uh, spoon prediction out the window. Okay, following them at five thirty, we have the the North Queensland Cowboys hosting Newcastle Knights. Wow, it's it's at the QCB Stadium. Where's that? QCB Q, QCB Stadium. Q's Queensland. Yeah, so yeah, but is it their home ground or is that's, it that's Queensland Country Back Stadium? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it is their stadium, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. You yeah. know what these stadiums are like. I thought it was called something What's else. What's Brookvale called now? I've lost, I've oh. lost track. Gosh. Um, Four Pines, I think. There you go. From 
from Powerball or whatever it was called before. <laughs> I forget. Um, you know what? I'm going the upset. Newcastle no. will bounce back. Yeah. No, I'm going cows. They were too. They were very impressive. Um, Newcastle. I don't trust Newcastle. I've now. got faith in the Nova Castrians for this yeah, one. There you go. I've got faith in the Nova Castrians uh, as well, but the Cowboys are, are just a just a far better rugby league team. Um, nice, hot, humid. Um, I need to see a, a, another performance yep. like yep. I saw yesterday. Yep, and I expect to see to, it. Yeah, I I, to and see I'm it. half expecting it, but I'm also expecting Newcastle better than what I saw from them. Newcastle will improve. Newcastle yeah. isn't uh, – what we saw the other day isn't – isn't the real Newcastle? They'll they'll get it they'll get it right, and they're they're a final they're a finals team, but um, the Cowboys are a premiership winning team. Okay, mm. round the uh, Saturday night we've got the Melbourne Storm at home again, uh, hosting the New Zealand Warriors. Terrible record, uh, the Warriors against uh, the Storm, Nicola. Terrible record. Again, I'm going to go the Warriors, and I'll tell you why. Oh wow! I'll tell you why. Wow. Two reasons. One. Obviously, they lost at home. Embarrassing for them. Similar to the Newcastle scenario, mm-hmm. we know they're a better side than they're that. They're better than that. Um, and two, Melbourne have got a wonderful first game winning streak. Um, can they back up that kind of effort again? Well, that's, That was a remarkable yeah, effort. No, it was, but that's who, that's who Melbourne are. Yeah. That's who yeah. Melbourne are. I'm going for the Warriors. But I think you're right. I think you're you're right. I think they'll break the hoodoo. Yeah. Warriors are Warriors are, are too too good, too good to to um, perform that that way again. And um, can Melbourne produce the same defensive ep- effort as they did last week, Adi? Both prelim finalists from last season too. Both prelim yeah. finalists. And um, apparently they're not going to rush Munster, so he might miss out this game as well. Yeah. So they're going to be one down, which will make it. Tougher. I thought the guy Jonah Pezet was pretty good actually filling in. Is question is that guy any relation to Troy Pezet? Yeah, I know. I think he might be because it's a rare surname. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm going to go. I suppose the upset. It is the upset. I'm going to tip the Warriors. I'm going Storm. I just think they're going to be too strong. You're going Warriors as well. Okay, sure. Opening the account on Sunday afternoon at uh, Powerball Stadium over there at Brookvale. That's Powerball now. No, what's it called? No, that oh, was, was Lo- Lotto Land or something. I don't know. I've lost. Let me check. Four Pines Park. Four Pines okay. Park, yeah. I still call it Brookie. Brookie, man. It's Brookie. Manly Seagulls hosting the Roosters. Oh. Wow. Oh. Wow. Two, wow. two very impressive first up performances. A very impressive. Uh, uh, obviously, the Roosters will be without. Spencer Lenu mm-hmm. um, and Manly, well, we know they've got the best best 5-8 in the game, Luke Brooks. Best half. Mm. Um, I think um, the Seagulls are going to come crashing down to earth, uh, Nicola, yeah. once the uh, Rusa forwards get stuck into them and they don't make all those metres that they, they made Jared last back? week. Yeah, uh, no. No? Is Hargraves back? He's back this week, mate. Yeah, oh. I was about to tell you he's back from his suspension. He played um, in the – That's right. He played in the Reggies. Reggies the other week. So that rubs out week. Spencer Lenu. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a like-for-like replacement. Exactly, yeah. yeah. A swap. So um, if we're right and what we said last week about him, if it's if it's consistent, um, Roosters will go to Melbourne and oh, – sorry, Roosters will go to Four Pines and um, Seagulls won't know what hit him. The Roosters are the favourites at a dollar seventy seven. So they should be. Yeah. So they should be. So they should be. Yeah. I'm Roos- Roosters will win. Absolutely. Roosters will definitely win. Yeah. Did you say Roosters too, Nick? Or? Yes. Yeah. Roosters, so all, yeah. we're all going Roosters. Yeah. Um, and so closing out the round, we've got the Dolphins up at their home ground, mm-hmm. um, not Suncorp, hosting the Dragons. Whoa. Dragons are going to go two from two. I'm tipping St George. <laughs> I didn't see enough with the Dolphins to be honest. Um, How disappointing. Uh, yeah. Um, the Dragons, on the other hand, um, it's very similar to um, whoever it was I mentioned earlier. I want to see if the Cowboys, uh, if the Dragons can do a repeat performance, mm. then we know there's something more there than, than just a so, off you know. So mm. l- the Dragons, last week's game was based on effort, yeah. based on courage, and this is that's things, Flanagan, yeah. But these are things you you can reproduce. Yeah. So, the, the, like the Panthers, it's very difficult. You have to have all those things, the effort and courage. But their system is very complex, 
it's a very it's complex. Dolphins. No, no, uh, I'm talking about Penrith. Oh, yeah. But but St. George, St. George, it's very simple. Yeah. We're going to tackle as hard as we can. We're going to run as hard as we can. And if a ball, if 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 a drop of water falls down on the ground, we're going to be the first one on it. So it's a very simple formula which mm. works. You're starting to sound like a Brad Arthur press conference. <laughs> is that it, what he says? It's all about the effort areas. Yeah, You've got to chase the, pro- the collision. The, the only problem is that St George does it and Parramatta yeah. does it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> or not play yeah. 80 minutes anyway. Yeah. So, um, and I didn't see enough from um, Dolphins. They are, they are going to improve. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But they're not going to improve enough uh, to beat Saints on the day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to Dragons. Well, Dolphins are going to lose a couple of players. Uh, Lemuelu is going to be out because he suffered a kneecap injury. And I think uh, Roy Stone could also be out. Oh, right. so oh, Kenny Stone's Brown. out too. Ray Stone. Uh, yeah, Ray Stone. Yeah, I big, think, um, big loss. Yeah, he failed his HIA. Um, so he's but got to sit around one. Two. Yeah, Category, category one. 1, yeah. He'll be out. Uh, St. George, we get uh, Luciano Lelua back. Um, so... I'm expecting St. George to win. I thought the Dolphins were terrible. Mm. But Bennett is the type of guy that, yeah. can, that can change things. Um, we might see Jake Averillo make his debut well, as well. I hope so. I hope so. Um, this, is, this is where I think Flanagan is so important. Mm. It would be real easy for the Dragons to let that game go to their head. Yeah, 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 sure. And think they just need to turn up and do the same thing again. Mm. Whereas Flanagan will, in, will ensure that happens. He, yeah. he won't let them get ahead of themselves. No, no, no. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So... Yeah, if they can do that, um, I'm picking the Dragons. And then in two weeks' time, they play the Cowboys. Oh, that's true. And both could be undefeated, so they'll be a top class. Interesting, interesting. Well, the, the Gold Coast are the team to have the bye this week. Yep. And uh, George, so no, who are you tipping? Are you tipping the Dragons? Yeah, Dragons. Yeah, Dragons. Mm-hmm. And that yep. rounds out Crystal Ball for this week's predictions. Fantastic. So uh, we'll see you all uh, for our next segment, which will be the Tidbits. See Enjoy, everyone. Then. Good bye luck bye with bye. everything, guys. Bye Enjoy. Bye bye. You know how we should end that segment? How? What, what game are you looking forward to the most? Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Just uh, just to plant a seed in the heads of people. Remember it, yeah. Yeah. I haven't really thought about this. I'm just kind of doing it off the mm-hmm. off the cuff. No, yeah. I just thought it'd be good to sort of just put that in. All right. So now we've got tidbits. I'm just thinking of coffee and donuts. <laughs> you boys ready? Yeah, whenever you're ready. Yeah. All right, three, two, one. Good to see everyone back. Quick Hands Podcast. Here we are again, episode 63, our last segment, Tidbits. George, what have you got for us? Uh, 1983, the year in review, uh, Nicola. Good year. Good <laughs> year. Um, what were, what were we listening to, Adi? What songs were we listening to in that 1983, mate? 1982. Oh, sorry, 82. 82, 82. Sorry. 82. Are you killing me? I was sorry, about, 82. I was about sorry. to say Kiss took the makeup off. <laughs> 82, 82. Sorry, I apologise. 82. What were we listening to, mate? Devo? We probably were. <laughs> but it wasn't in the top five. <laughs> oh, it wasn't in the top five. 82. Give me something, anything. Um, Counting the beat two, what was that called? What year did Thriller come out? Uh, 83. Oh, 83. Uh, yeah. Okay, oh, let, 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 let me help you out. We're listening to Physical. Oh, yeah. Physical. Okay. Yeah. Flash dance. Solid um, Rock. rock. We well, probably were. Didn't make the top, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> top five. <laughs> Eye of the Tiger. Oh, yeah. Survivor. Oh, Rocky 3. Yes. Heart in My Heart. Quarter Flash. Remember that one? I know. Heart of yes. my heart. That is a Not for you. That's a great song. track. That's a great it? track. Uh, Underrated I thought, track. I thought you might like it. Here's he's, he's one that uh, Nickel knows uh, well and it's uh, a family favourite. Uh, I Can't Go For That by uh, Hall and Nate. Oh. Where's the G-Man when you need him? Where's the G-Man oh, yeah. when you need him? By the way, I spoke to the G-Man. I told him we we're going to have him on for for the West Tigers episode. Yeah, that he's we for he's Yeah, for it? definitely. Um, he's one for you. This is one uh, Ari's going to stir up. We got the beat. Oh, wow. The go goes. Go goes. Yeah. And um, Belinda Carlisle? Belinda yeah, Carlisle. Yeah, she was always. Remember had a that crush one? On Me, too. Up. Me too. Yeah. And then I gorgeous. found out what, what kind of person she really was. <laughs> um, and uh, to end it off, a song that uh, I'm sure Artie knows. I'm not sure if you'll know. Uh, Let It Whip by the Daz Band. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Oh, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, little that's gem, that one. It. Um, Nicola. What movies were we watching at uh, Rocky Three? <laughs> yeah, we were. 82. Rocky Superman Three, Superman Two. 
You probably were, but not on the uh, list. No, here. actually, Superman. Another, another, Rambo, another, yeah. another, oh. another uh, Stallone movie. Uh, well, 1982. Uh, over the first, top. Not First Blood. Yeah, first Blood. Yeah. Oh, First Blood. First Blood. Uh, a, a movie that which is close to our heart, and we watched it in his, in his room. Porkies. Porkies. <laughs> it's one of the funniest episodes we've ever done. For those of you who don't know. We've got to do it again. We've got to, <laughs> we've got to, we've got to do Porkies We've got a too. huge television here that we're not using, probably because Artie and I are banned from it. <laughs> but we did we did one episode last year where we just happened to have Porkies on. Yeah. And uh, poor George was talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> we, were just, we were lost. We were just, Episode 69 is going to be Porky's oh, too. That's 69? coming up, yeah. isn't it? Okay. It is. Mm. Six weeks. <laughs> and the uh, the two big movies of the year, uh, Nicola, was E.T. Oh, of wow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That was. That was. And this is one of my wife's uh, favourite. Drew Barrymore's debut. Drew Barrymore's yeah. debut. Oh, was it? Yeah, there she was go. a little girl. Yeah. And one of my wife's favourite movies, uh, and I'm assuming, I don't know this for a fact, one of uh, Nicolas, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Of course. Oh, it's my son's favourite. Is it? He loves Costa. He loves Raiders of, of the Lost Ark. Of course. Um, tell me, um, yeah. so I I, uh, I was uh, walking down the street and I saw a look, you know, those little MGs? Yeah. And he had a, a South Sydney personalised number plate. And you had a. a Are you talking about now or in '82? Yeah, no, 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 the other day. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. The, other, the other day, yeah. the other day, and um, you had a sort of South Sydney badge in the, in the car. Now, obviously, that's South Sydney's the bunny sponsor. Yeah. So now I'm assuming which player was? No, oh, no, it wasn't a player. <laughs> I don't think it was a player. I didn't see the owner. Yeah. But well, I'm assuming that the sponsorship had something to do with this. I'm assuming lady or, or young man's purchase of this car. My question to you guys was. Was there any sponsorship of, of any team or your team which sort of got you to buy something, be it subscription or That's a really good question. Not Jersey. Yes. Ah, always Artie comes to the fall. Always. What do you got me? What do you got for me, Artie? Mate, I remember once when I bought my first bottle of wine, it was had to be Penfolds because of dragons. Yes. We had the Penfolds. Yes, thing. yes, yes. Were the eighties? It would have been eighties, yeah. yeah it late tasted 80s. terrible. The worst <laughs> one ever still. Just because it was on the jersey. <laughs> You had to do it. Um, yeah, no, absolutely not. I don't think I've ever really – it hasn't mattered who the sponsor is to me. I um, remember HCF Finance? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I actually – I didn't get any finance from them but I did ring them up uh, <laughs> asking for finance uh, from uh, from the – it was a jersey sponsor for Canterbury I think. Yeah. Late 80s was it? By the time I was old, old enough to make those phone calls, James Hardy were in court for asbestos. <laughs> 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 so you didn't buy any fibro, mate? Absolutely not. <laughs> no <laughs> fibro. Very good. Very, there very good. Go. Um, let's uh, talk Super League. Um, I'm not doing the table, not yet, but I'm okay, following. Can I just add one more thing? Yeah. 82. Yeah. That was when Italy won the World Cup. Italy won the World Cup. So yeah. it was a World Cup year. It was two of four and one of two that I've personally seen. Paolo Rossi? Yeah. Is that yeah. the guy he's... Yeah. yeah. Golden Boot winner. Golden Boot winner. Had to throw that in. Let me, let me. Um, um, this is not part of the tidbits, but let me. Th- I wasn't going to do this, but let me throw something in. FIFA, in their wisdom, has have decided that if you identify as a man or a woman, either or, if you're a man or a woman, you can play. So if you're a man, yeah. you identify as a woman, you can play for the women's team, sort of thing. You know what? what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the swim, there swimming. Is, FIFA has done it. The swimming has done it. The track's done it. I just don't want it to come into the NRL. Mo- moving on. There. Moving yeah. on. Uh, we, we're we following um, uh, the plight of uh, the world champions, uh, Nicola, the Wigan Warriors, yeah. which is, um, I think, Adi's pick to win the, the comp, I think. No, St. Helens. St. Helens, okay. Well, the Wigan Warriors went to London. Uh, for a bit of a trip. That's your team, London Broncos. Uh, no, 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 no. What's your team again? Lee Leopard. Catalans. Catalans. That's, that's, the, that's the pod's team. That's the, no, that's the Lee Leopard. Yeah. 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 The yeah. ugliest jersey in history. Ugliest jersey yeah. in history. I should get one. Anyway, um, uh, London Broncos uh, 22, Wigan Warriors 60, uh, Nicola. 60? 60. Tight. Close game. Tight, tight, tight game. <laughs> Brendan, uh, Bevan French would have scored oh, a million. 25 tries probably. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sort of short, so he's got a lot of tries. St. Helens fell again, Nicola. What? Really? St. Helens, sorry, uh, sorry, Adi. St. Helens fell again. They went to Salford and uh, they lost uh, 24-20. And, uh, Last Ma- minute try? 
Uh, well, yeah, on the yeah. buzzer, no. Yeah, Salford was better. Yeah, they all, scored all in the sixty-third minute. No, yeah, just yeah. that's yeah. that's the Manchester yeah. United. Wow. Um, no, they were better. All yeah, they were a bit down. Uh, St Helens and my team. Uh, what were my pick? The Catalans. Uh, they went to Hull FC and uh, they uh, Catalans won 26 uh, 12 Nicola. In a couple of weeks, I'll start uh, producing the table. Sam's, th- Sam's team's doing very well, by the way. I saw a bit of that. I saw a bit of it in the background. Sam's what about Sam's. Um, uh, Sims? When's his, he's not suspended? No, no, no. Oh, that's right. He got cleared. He, he got cleared. Yeah, got s- and you asked me um, Australians playing in the Super League. Hmm. We shouldn't have asked that question because um, Matty Frawley, you remember him? Yes. Matt Frawley, he's playing for Leeds. Yep. Remember the Canterbury player, uh, Jaden Ockenberg? Yep. He's playing for Hull FC. Okay. Remember Frankie Pelly? Pell? I yes. think it was, um, uh, he was. He played a uh, stint at uh, Panthers, then I think he went to St. Bulldogs. George. Bulldogs. Frank- Bulldogs. Franklin Pelly. Yeah. St. George, I think he went to. No, I don't remember. No. Dragons. Okay. I think it was a Bulldog. Yeah, well, last. he went to Hull FC. Uh, I threw this in because we know him. Luke Thompson went to Wigan. Okay, yeah. Uh, Jaden Nicarima. N- Nicarima. Yes. Uh, he went to Catalans. Uh, as you know, Sims went to Catalans. Uh, Fanua Brown. Remember Fanua Brown? Yeah. Yeah, Fanua Brown went to Hull FC. Journeyman, that guy. Yeah. Lock- remember Lucky uh, Miller? Yes. Yeah, he went. He, he went. started the season with a bang last oh, year no. and then he just went. What do you do? He must well, be killing it there. I reckon that's his type it. of. Yeah. He's killing it, yeah. He went to Leeds. Uh, remember Lachlan Fitzgibbon? Yes. The Newcastle back rower? No, he's, he's, he's killing it at Warrington. Yeah, good player. He's killing it at Warrington. Remember Peter Hiku? Yeah. He's killing it at well, uh, Hull FC. He was in his 30s, mid 30s, uh, early 30s. Early 30s. Remember Paul Momorowski? Yes. Superstar at Leeds. He's a good player here. I don't know why he wasn't yeah, picked up as I well. He's I'd, a very talented know. player. You know about the crazy Italian and Dufty at, uh, at Warrington? Yeah, at Warrington. Warrington. Sorry, yeah. uh, remember Tex Hoy? Yeah. He's actually playing really well. He's, he's playing for uh, Hull FC, but he's playing really well. Good on him. Yeah. Remember Tyrone May? Yeah. Yes. Penrith. Yeah, Penrith. He's playing no one wants to touch him, eh? No one wants to touch him. But you know what? He looks like he play, he's playing for Hull KR. He looks like a, a step above. Like he's, he can't be there. He's he, too good. He's an unbelievable player. I think good. he's a very, very good player, but because of his past, because of his off-field, okay, no well, one wants to touch him. I hope he comes back because, how can I say... He just he he looks like he's in not the company we should be. Yeah, he's like up he's here and everybody's player. down here. Or he will do something and he looks around and like no one's gone with him because mm. they're not they don't think like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So that's that. Uh, we know we know Curtis Sirian is playing for St Helens, and of course Jay Field and Bevan French are, are Wigan players. Mm. So yeah. that's how many players are playing in uh, the Super go. League. Uh, Hardy uh, nineteen. 82 the season. 1982 the season. 1982. Uh, the KB Cup winner. Midweek competition. KB Cup. Manly won uh, did they? that competition. It was yeah. a Wednesday uh, night I competition. That. I wish uh, they still did that. Yeah, that was good, eh? Leichhardt Oval. Um, the first Chattery, Charity Shield was played on 1982. Oh, uh, wow. The there first Chattery Shield was was played. Um the the you know the actual trophy that gets presented on the grand final that gladiator trophy oh yes yeah that was the first year it was oh, produced was that it? was the first year it came really? out yeah that was yeah the so Parramatta won it yeah Parramatta won the first uh, the first trophy of that famous gladiator that's mm. something Penrith can't take off us <laughs> 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 no they can't two new teams entered the competition Artie give me one of them Canberra what'd you say sorry you what, asked Artie you I said Canberra Canberra yeah. Yes. Illawarra? Yes. <laughs> yes and yes. Yeah, 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 and where did they finish? Oh, Illawarra last. Yes. Second last. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but at least Canberra's won a comp since yeah. then. Yes, they have. Illawarra. Illawarra has it. Well, St. George Illawarra. Emerged. Yeah, St. George Illawarra yeah, yeah. given that one. Um, the first time ever there was a, a nil or draw. It was uh, between Canterbury and Newtown, uh, wow. Canterbury uh, versus Newtown at Henson Park. Wow! And and it will never, never happen again, I don't think. Who won the Rothmans medal? Eighty two. Eighty two. Sturlo? Canterbury player. Mortimer. Lamb. Greg Bretnell. Oh, you Brett, the fullback. I never fullback. would have picked Bretnell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, so. Greg Bretnell. Mm-hmm. Who won the Dell M? Parramatta oh. player. Sturlo. Sturlo. Kenny. 
Cronin mm -hmm. is a lock. I'm just Ray Price. Price. Yeah. Ray Price. Price. Now I was just guessing. <laughs> back back then, um, it wasn't the Dalian, was it? Yeah, it was a Dalian. It was okay. a Dal Dalian from the league, but it all this all started from Rothman. So, um, the magazine, um, um, t was it Rugby League Week or Big League? Big Rugby League, League yeah. Big League started the Dalian, mm -hmm. which which um, the N uh, NRL or then New South Wales Rugby League bought off them, and the Rothmans medal was always given. By the cigarette company, but the referees. Winfield. Are, yeah, well, yeah. So, but the referees would pick the the winner oh. every year. Yeah. Um, but the Rugby League Week uh, magazine that year gave it to Kevin Hastings. Yeah. Three times. Yep. Uh, three times in a row. He was a fantastic player. He was. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, one of your favourites too, mm. uh, Kevin Hastings. Yeah. yeah. The top five of that year, uh, Nicola, was uh, Parramatta came with minor premiers. Uh, Manly came second, Norths, Norths came third, East uh, came fourth, and West uh, finished the. Uh, poor, poor Norths, always the bridesmaid. Fifth. <laughs> poor Who North. was the big gun then? <laughs> North Don Sydney. McKinnon. Don McKinnon was one of them. Wasn't Flo, was it? Was well, wait, a second, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. He played for Manly too, right? Don McKinnon. Yeah. We all know the famous story about Don McKinnon. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He relieved himself. Taking, from... taking a piss on, beside <laughs> the post yeah. in the middle of a game while the other team was taking a conversion. <laughs> <laughs> Brain surgery. Imagine doing that today. By the way, Don't he... about the rational oh, slur. Imagine yeah, doing that imagine. now. He was also. Uh, <laughs> he was also, I believe, a sergeant or something in like that. And, station, and he. Um, I can't remember the exact story. You might have to look it up. But he did a really heroic thing in some scenario. I, I can't remember the details. Tom McKinnon? Yeah. yeah. I might have him as a play in review next, next week. Yeah, I've got to look it up. Uh, uh, here's something interesting. In the major semi-final, Manly beat Parramatta 20-0. Mm. And they advanced. But in the grand final, Parramatta flipped it and um, won 21-8. <laughs> to be the premiers, yeah, and who can who can uh, forget who I can I can't forget uh, still those massive bombs, uh, little nineteen year old boy or yeah. was twenty then I think, and um, uh, Johnny Peard just had sort of retired mm. a year or so before. Remember that. Johnny Peard's ABC Radio yeah. Saturday afternoon. Sorry, ABC Footy on Channel Two. Yeah, on Channel Two, yeah. Mm. Saturday afternoons. Um, anyway, he took over from Johnny Peard and he just bombed away, bombed manly. Uh, Oh, wait, what's your recollection, or if any, at 82? Uh, 82 yeah. Well, I mean, I started watching in 81 when I was six, so very little. Yeah, I mean, I've so obviously seen it a lot since then. But one thing I want to point out, um, and rightfully so, we all talk about Stephen Crichton scored in three consecutive grand finals. Mm -hmm. Well, Brett Kenny scored two tries in three consecutive yeah. grand finals. No, no, Just no. thought I'd point that out. No, no, uh, and if and he, if him and Sterling as as a package are not the next Immortals, I'll be a monkey's uncle. But that's uh, say that, George. that's uh, I'm offended. That's uh, <laughs> 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 that's uh, not, that's 1982, the season that that, that was. So the premiers, um, uh, Parramatta, the player in review, and this could be a little bit contra controversial. We haven't got a player. We've got a coach, oh. uh, Roy Masters. Ah, oh, okay. Wow, yeah. Roy Masters. Roy, uh, Roy Masters. Masters, born the 15th of October, 1941. He did play rugby league. He played yeah. in the country. Uh, look, he, even he admits that he was a, a player of limited ability. Yeah. He was a hooker. He coached the Dragons, didn't he? He coached the yeah. Dragons, all right. Mm -hmm. um, he was a school teacher. He was a school teacher at, at Tweed Rivers High where he coached um, the Open's Rugby League team um, and he had moderate success there. So Tamworth High School um, gave him a, a call and, and brought him down. Now, back then, Nicola, you would you would know, back in the 80s there was a schoolboy com competition which was on television called the University Shield. Yeah, no, I do um, remember. Oh, yeah. Do you remember yeah, yeah. Uni Shield? Yeah. yeah. Um, there was a few others, but the University Shield was the, the big one. I do one. remember that. And it was... It was a very, very, very high quality competitive um, uh, competition, and I actually um, went to just the high school, so we were a school which really didn't didn't have a chance of, of making anything. Anything. When I was in year nine, I think I might have been in year ten. We actually got through to the the quarters. And our prince, the principal, and you can check this up, was a, a guy called Ted Glossop. 
Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, really? He didn't coach the team. Another yeah. Coach. Couldn't coach the team. He wasn't coaching the, uh, Canterbury then, but he was a psycho for rugby league. Well, obviously. they take loss of, yeah. And mm. um, uh, it was a big thing. Um, we didn't get on television because it's the later rounds and the yeah. big schools get on, t- uh, you know, your Ashcroft's and, and all this. But um, I, it was a just to make a point that it was a very big prestigious schoolboy competition. Can I just interrupt for one second? Mm. I just want to mention for Artie, my peer teacher was David Waite. Yeah, I think it's on. Yeah, 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 he's a good coach. Love David Waite. I was at St George uh, League's Club and um, uh, uh, a friend, um, Michael Seth, which went to school with uh, Nicola and mm. he knew David Waite very well at that time coaching St George. Um, he was going through the club. And um, he called him over and mm. he sat down and I was still young and naive and I had one of the most amazing conver- conversations with this guy. Yeah. When he left, he was there for about 15 minutes, I learnt more in that 15-minute co- uh, con- uh, conversation, uh, Adi, than I knew all my life about rugby league. He didn't <laughs> like me very much. Why? Well, you, didn't, uh, you didn't turn up, that's why. <laughs> no, I, t- I think that's why he didn't like me because I kept turning up. <laughs> <laughs> Had a few detentions there, good old Mr. Yeah. Waite. <laughs> anyway, Roy Masters went to um, Tamworth High School, Nicola, and he won the University uh, the university yeah. Shield, which um, straight away got, uh, elevated him to um, the Australian schoolboy coach. And in this team, the, in this Australian schoolboy team, had players like Ian Schubert, Craig Young, Les Boyd, <laughs> Royce Ailey. Wow. Yeah. Um, they they went to Great Britain and um, they scored 108 tries and only conceded eight tries and um, were obviously undefeated. Wow. Uh, so when he came back, Penrith snapped him up and gave him the under-23 uh, job. And once again, and he had to co- he, he went to school. Um, uh, he was a teacher at Doom, so- Doom uh, Side High, yeah. Yeah, which had the, uh, the, the, a, the A team there, the, the University Shield team. Um, which didn't do, didn't do too well, but 1978 he got an opportunity to to coach um, Western Suburbs, so off he goes to Western Suburbs, and and the reason that he did coach uh, or did go to Western Suburbs because players like uh, Les Boyd, Tom Radonikus, Graham O'Grady, and, and John Dorohy knew of him or play, has played for him as as, as kids. And he's smiling. No, I'm smiling because I actually went out with Irene Dory, his great, niece. Great you. His niece. Yeah, great, great yeah. girl. Long Good time family. Ago. Good family. Nine, early nineties. So he um, rocked up at Western Suburbs with with uh, like I said, Dorothy Boyd, uh, Do- Dallas Donnelly, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Tommy Radonikus, Graham O'Grady, um, and he was, he was <laughs> he was a master in psychology. That was his mm. biggest gift, uh, psychology, and um, he's the one who who knew that the team he had and Manly were a, a flamboyant um, running run gun sort of team back then in the seventies, uh, Nicola, and he's the one who started the silver tail chant. Yeah, <laughs> he's the one who started the. So he made him believe that the Western Suburbs uh, fibros. Because he said that those fibros, when he used to drive from Penrith to to uh, Lidcombe, yeah. all he'll see is fibro homes, hmm. and all the boys lived in fibro homes. So, so he called he called uh, our, his team the fibros, and um, he t- he called Manly the silver tails, not knowing or not telling them that there's probably as much fibro in Manly no. as <laughs> there was in um yeah. there was in if the western I, suburbs of Sydney. If you guys haven't seen it. Go on YouTube and look up the Fibros in the Silver Tales yeah, documentary. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's really yeah, good. It's really good. Um, so uh, um, Channel 9 decided to make a documentary um, because uh, West had this aggressive style of, of mm. rugby league. Was that the one? Sorry, did I jump the gun? No, which one? On that documentary? Oh, okay. Um, no, 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 yeah, it was. So he had this, uh, they had a, a very aggressive style, but they were winning. They were winning. Yeah. Um, there was one one game that Roy Masters uh, rocks up and has a look at it, has a look at his team. Mm-hmm. He goes to the assistant coach and says, um, "Mate, look, get them going. I, I don't know what's happening, but they're looking like they, they prefer to be in bed." 
So apparently the assistant coach was a martial arts uh, martial arts guy. Mm. So he got them all up and he, he made them sort of, I don't know, wrestle and slap each other. <laughs> he didn't know. He got out of control. I mean, and, and Ray Martin's eyes were lighting up. They were filming they this. They started slapping each they other. They started slapping each other and they started Tom, Tommy fighting. Tommy was in that. In Tommy that, was, was yeah. in like, like, like yeah. I think Dallas Donnelly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there was some ammunition there um, for Channel 9 but apparently it was, a, it was a very innocent sort of thing. Hmm. They they had moderate – he had moderate success uh, at the uh, at, at uh, the Magpies uh, Nicola. Didn't win a comp. And he said if he'd done more on fitness uh, and then drinking or the bonding part of it, he might have done a little bit better. <laughs> but they didn't do bad either. Yeah. Mm. Then 82, he decided to move to St. George. Well, there was also um, fuel on the fire because four of those players went to Manly. Yeah, when they, that's when they all sort of broke, yeah. broke mm. up mm. at the end of the 70s, early 80s, yeah. Yeah. Um, he said that something like Warren Ryan said that the juice was squeezed out of them. Yeah. yeah. Mm, mm. Then he went to – then he moved to um, uh, St. George and Adi can tell me a little bit about that era too. Tell me about that era. He got us to the grand final yeah. uh, and I thought we were going to win it because we won all three grades. Uh, was that 85? We won all the 85. two grades 82. before that. Yeah, 85. No, 85. No, 85, 85 yeah. Final. So 85. he was building He was building a good side and 85 we had a really good side and uh, we lost it to – the Bulldogs, you guys were six, unlucky seven that six, yeah, yeah. yeah. something yeah. rather. Yeah, no, I think you, you were unlucky. But we had a good team well. then back then. It was um, Beatty. Um, that was Johnston, 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 Johnston. Johnston yeah, yeah that, that was brilliant team. Yeah. Think, uh, think Tony Tony Trudger. second Trudger. Trudger, yeah. Yeah. eighty-four grand final, six-four, Bulldogs over the Eels. Yeah, eighty-five, seven-six, mm. the Bulldogs over the Dragons. Eighty-six, four-two, <laughs> the Eels over the Bulldogs. Wow. Three in a row, just. Mm. Grind Single fest. digits. Yeah, yeah. Fest. yeah. Very tight. Uh, 86, the only Tritus Grand Final. Trials Grand Final, mm. 86, yeah. Um, 85, uh, Adi, he got the Coach of the Year, Del Lim Coach of the Year. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen to this. His, his su- su- winning success, success rate at West was 60%. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, at St. George, 55%. Really? Yeah. So he's, he, he would win a lot of games like during the season yeah. and not win a comp but he came close at it was St George yeah um, but then Parramatta and Canterbury were dominating then oh, so he did well to in, sort of in the early for 80s pe- for people yeah. who don't know um, 55 60% is actually a very good rate yeah, it is rate. yeah absolutely yeah. I don't think Bill and me will have that much yeah mm. um, in, say, in saying that can you mention some of the plays in that 85 team com- and I'll compare it to the, the Parramatta team Slippery was in there Yes, yeah, slippery was in there. Yeah, yeah, sure. Tr- Trudget was off uh, one wing. Mm. Trudget, oh god, man! Was yeah, Craig Young? Yeah. Was Craig Young front row? Yeah, yeah. it would have been Craig yeah. Young, uh, mate. Dean was, Young was Stone. Was, st- was Stone? Uh, yeah, Lincoln? Robert Stone. Robert Stone. Finch. Lincoln. Robert Finch. Finch was in the Finch front row. Finch was there. Yeah. Um, How about the the lock? Do you remember the lock? Graham Wynn. Winnie was the. That was my favourite. Graham Wynn. Wynn's brother. Yeah, yeah. 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 Back row. Um, One of the back rowers. Yeah, it was a lock, I think. Wasn't Graham win the lock? Yeah. He was the back rowers. Um, I don't um, – Scott Goulet. <laughs> no, that was, that was 90s. That was 90s. Yeah. Uh, well, who, who was the fullback? Was that, Johnson. Was that, that would have been Johnson. Oh, that was Johnson. Or was that Potter? It might have been Potty, Potsy. Potter what? played for the Dragons in 85, yeah, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think Potsy. Yeah, Potsy. 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 And he, and he, didn't, didn't he get married the got, season or something? He got Dal Liam, didn't he, in 85? Yeah. I think he got Dal Liam, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then when we look at Parramatta, let's forget Canterbury, what we have, Sterling, Kenny, Ella – uh, who were some of the forwards there? Well, the Bunnings, Lee Beater, Bunden, yeah. Price. So well, Ken read the Mortimer, the Hughes, the. So what, what we're trying mm. to say is he done very well to get him to the yeah, Grand yeah, Finals. That's did. what I'm saying. He did. He, yeah. he did. He currently uh, lives in Melbourne, uh, Nicola. Um, he's Journal. a journo, as we journo, know. Journo, yeah. He's a journo. I read a lot yeah. of his stuff. His he's wife, pretty good. His wife's uh, a journo as well, actually. Mm. Uh, he writes for the uh, Sydney Morning Herald. He uh, does things for ABC. I like Roy Masters. Mm. Yeah, right. and he's a he's a very he's a very well spoken, yeah. very intelligent, yeah. very neutral um, man. Um, where his knowledge of rugby league is so in depth. When I hear him speak, it's like I said about um, the Sir George coach that I met in the in the foyer there. Oh yeah, Wade. When, yeah. yeah, David Wade. When I hear him speak, I learn so much. 
and um, one of my one of my favourite eras, one of my favourite teams, uh, that Western Suburbs team. Who can remember it? And like I, I've told you, all the famous story when my first game when I went to Lincoln Mobile. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I told you that. I'll tell it another day. And uh, that's me, Nick. That's it. Well, thanks for that. That was very interesting. I'm, I enjoy that player in profile. Yeah. Uh, it's always interesting and it forces it us to kind of switch on the memory bank, it's, it which does. is not always easy to do. Well, I, am, right. I, am I gone too back? Should I come into the 2000s? No, 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 it's good. It's good. Oh, I don't know. I just, I just, I just think it's maybe it's I'm it's going it's too interesting. back. It, look, it's interesting for some of the younger listeners to, to hear about this, you know, players that they might not be familiar with and it's also interesting for some of the older guys our age who, who reminisce about it. So. Yeah. yeah, good. George, just uh, Glenn Burgess was the fullback. Glenn Burgess? Yeah. And Michael O'Connor. Oh, and Beatty, of course. Steve of course. Morris, Steve Lenane. 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 That's a good um, thing. Robert Stone, Phil Ritchie, Craig Young, Chris Walsh, Graham O'Grady. O'Grady. Yes. He was a fantastic lock. Anyway, they're the, they're so the that, players. So that, that's a good team. Yeah. That's a good that team. That was the no A5 team. Made, no wonder he made the grand final. Mm. Well, that's it. That's a wrap for episode 63. Thank you. Thanks all for listening and hope yeah. you have a great week. Um, Enjoy the footy. Another round of football, round yeah. two. And uh, thanks, boys. Always a pleasure. And we'll see you all next week. Enjoy your football. Enjoy your football. Happy, Happy rugby league. Happy rugby league, league everybody. That's it. Have Bye. fun. See Bye. You. Bye.